We're back with another week of the Super Magical Cup Invitational, and Rainy is now joined once again by the Rum Ham. I'm back! <laughs> Rum Ham's back. I feel like we say that multiple times in, in, throughout the, the season. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have a tendency to go to Las Vegas. Uh, so what happened last week, Rainy? I watched it last week. It was super exciting. Some really innovative decks came out. From your standpoint, solo casting, what, uh, what was the story last week? So the story for me, as is the continual story in the Super Magic Cup, I feel it's kind of like this underlying theme that's going around is that there was a Sparky deck, <laughs> which really? was the most interesting to me. In the top four, top eight? No, I, well, now that I think, I think it just fell short of, of advancing from uh, groups. We were following it through yeah. the event. It, it fell short of event, and I think it was, you know, Angry Groceries was a balloon player. Um, I yep. can't remember he had a the double name. balloon deck. So yeah. the meta, the, what was really interesting to me was that the meta seemed very different and very interesting. So you know, I think we saw a, a sort of hyper evolution of the game's meta over the last two weeks because prior to tournaments, everyone thought they knew what the best decks were. Right? Yeah. They're like, oh, Hog Cycle, Royal Giant. We all know what the mm -hmm. best decks are. Mm -hmm. But as soon as tournament hit, we saw Minor come out of not not nowhere. People knew, but I don't think people thought that Minor was going to be as much of the meta as it was. I think they didn't realize how much stronger it would have become in yes. the tournament format. Yes, so much stronger in the tournament format. We also saw a, uh, a kind of a return of the Double Prince archetype. Mm -hmm. Double Prince actually being very good in the tournament caps mm -hmm. because people finally had their princes up to level. Mm -hmm. And uh, some a few big tanky cards like Lava Hound. What I thought was crazy was that... Uh, Angry Groceries brought two different balloon decks that yeah. played very differently. The Lava Hound balloon deck is a sort of the big battle cruiser of coming to kill your tower. Yeah. And the other deck ran Knight and Valkyrie as the tanks, which is smaller than the standard uh, giant balloon that you might have thought about yeah. before. Yeah, super interesting. And and he, he had a lot of success with that. And actually, to add on to the point, another, another deck that started, that started becoming popular, and a lot of people are attributing it to kind of the loss of that 11th elixir, is giant combination decks. Hmm. Right, so people started playing Giant Balloon, and yeah. I think maybe that was taken after some of the success of, of I suppose, I think Clyde was one of them that, that ran Giant Balloon, and then Giant Poison kind of was his other was his other thing. But he kind of really popularized Giant Plus something in the Super Magical Cup. Absolutely, I think. yeah, that's something that Clyde is definitely. I remember distinctly being one of the sort of innovators yeah. of sort of yeah. taking the torch of Jason the Giant from Helsinki and sort of bringing that yeah. forward through the Super Magical Cup. Yeah. The game, the one that really stood out to me is sort of the lack of Royal Giants in both the in-game tournaments and, of course, the Super Magical Cup. Yeah. People think that uh, Royal Giant is you know one of the more overpowered cards on the ladder because as a common, mm -hmm. it's easy to over-level it, to yes. have, you know, a level 11 Royal Giant when you are level 9, for example. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, in terms that hasn't done very well, and the lack of Royal Giants has opened up a huge amount of interesting Siege decks, like Woody's Expo deck yeah. from last week. So Woody, the first, I believe, two-time Super Magical <laughs> Cup Invitational Champion, as he yes. won the first event of Season 1 and now the first event of Season 2. He is for sure there. the most winning player in Super Magical Cup. Absolutely. He brought a new deck that I don't think anyone saw coming on, on their radar, which was a very heavy defensive Expo deck. And he used that Expo deck along with his trademark Mortar to go all the way through the finals and win. I've been playing mm -hmm. the Expo deck. It's a lot of fun on the ladder. I kind of, do you think we'll see some more Expo this week from Woody imitators? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I had a talk with Woody uh, earlier in the week and, and I talked about, you know, his thoughts on the games and the decks that he plays and, and kind of how it's playing out. And interestingly enough, so as I remember, and, and I'll probably need to go back and watch, watch the tournament last week again, but Woody's Expo deck never lost a single it's match. It's so strong. The combination of Elixir Collector and Rocket allows you to really win that Elixir War mm -hmm. against your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, and also has Barbs and Valkyrie. So he's pretty minor proof. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I got the Collector. And of course, if they play Collector, can blow it up. It's crazy how it can, it can really win that Elixir War and then just translate that into one card, a single Expo, yeah. for the win. But what was interesting about this conversation, and here's the twist okay. from him, is that Woody told me that he thought the crossbow deck was the weaker deck out of the two. And he said he was less comfortable playing it. Which was interesting to me because I was like, hey man, if you look at the numbers, like your crossbow deck is wildly successful as compared to your to your other deck, which 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 he had lost with in the tournament. But it was interesting to me. Maybe it's it's kind of this element where Woody is just feeling like one of the things that was really key to Woody as a player, and, and the reason why I talk about him so much is kind of he's, I feel like he's a player to beat, especially in, in the Super Magical Cup. Of course. And I think extending beyond the Super Magical Cup in terms of Clash Royale in general, he's kind of the player to beat. And uh, he was talking about how 
where his strength come from, comes from is in his ability to be so familiar with the interactions of each of the cards in regards to something like he would play like Mortar or Princess, which we know he's been very, very loyal to. Sure. He just understands those interactions so well that any combination of cards that you play against him, he can figure out what the ideal response is and execute that yeah. to perfectly. And that's kind of what gives him his consistency and success that we see demonstrated in leaderboards, right? He's Absolutely. number one in season one, number one in season two, and and the most winning player. And I feel like maybe it's that element of that crossbow deck being unfamiliar in terms of, I you think know, that's the key. Yeah. I, but if he keeps working on, at it, I mean, it's mm -hmm. obviously very successful. Yeah, I think that what he takes to, tends to take advantage of people being unfamiliar with playing against Mortar and other of these Siege archetypes mm -hmm. in order to force them into uncharacteristic mistakes he can take advantage of. But it's interesting, I just looked at the bracket. He is not in this week. Uh, he's taken yeah. the week off, uh, probably doing some very important real-life stuff. So who do you got out of this field that lacks a sort of clear leader? Yeah, so last week... Flash was highly, highly successful. Very, very successful player. He made it all the way to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. CMC Hugh, interesting in, interestingly enough, big player in tournaments. Absolutely. Everybody knows that. Representing elite gaming, I believe. Mm -hmm. He got knocked out in the first round. Ooh. And I think, when I think Rumham, that's because he has to get used to bracket play. Absolutely. You got to get used to rotating those play. decks. Yep. The unfortunate thing about the bracket format is that you cannot, you can't skip anyone, right? Like yeah. you have to figure out a way to beat every opponent in front of you, which I think is exactly. an interesting challenge for people who might be familiar with the latter format where you can take a loss and, mm -hmm. you know, keep going. Mm -hmm. Grubby of StarCraft fame is joining us. This is a former StarCraft yeah. 2 pro. You know, I actually did some researching about that because I'm always very skeptical when mm -hmm. I go on the internet, but... I know that Grubby from StarCraft does play Clash Royale, but I'm not I'm not yet convinced that that's the Grubby. I think I think it is. I think it is. You think it is? Because only a really competitive player would be able to find such a good competitive format as the Super Magical Cup, right? If it was just some casual, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's I think Free Willy is another player I want to call out. Free Willy is another player who sort of came out of nowhere to make a big name in the in-game tournament scene during the featured Royale tournament week. I don't I obviously I didn't watch last week. I don't know how Free Willy did last week if if he played at all, but I've played against heads up with him. Very talented player, good strong mechanical skills. So, let's see how Free Willy does uh, in this format. Anyone else jump out to you? So, looking through, I think uh, Mal is a name that I see a lot in kind of the open qualifiers. He's been really working hard Absolutely. attending those qualifiers and, and doing well in them. And continuing to look through the list, we have Justin for the win coming through again. This is actually a pretty star-studded matchup because uh, YouTube Chester last week finished second. Yeah. So we have the second place finisher from last week against uh, Super Magical Cup 8 winner Justin for the win mm -hmm. and Super Magical Cup 9 second place finisher, yeah. right? So he is <laughs> very, very, very a very proven player in this format against last week's second place finisher. So I like this, uh, you know, old salty veteran against a young buck. We'll see yeah. who goes there. Yeah. And then below that, we have Angry Groceries, who we were just talking about with mm -hmm. this balloon. I think Angry Groceries, especially with his decks, is almost, I think, similarly to Woody... I feel like, and of course, we've only seen him in one Super Magical Cup tournament, but I'm going to make a prediction, Rumham, that he's going to be able to have very consistent results past the top eight. And I might eat my words, but the reason why I have this gut feeling is because I feel like he understands, kind of similarly to how Woody understands the Mortar, I think Angry Groceries understands the Balloon enough that he can trade interactions consistently sure. to give him those results. The question is, is he going to stick to his guns and keep playing Balloon decks? I, I hope that, just like we have Woody as the Mortar player, I hope we sort of get a consistent Balloon player in the circuit, because mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite cards, but I, I haven't really been able to innovate on a lot of those deck lists, so I, mm -hmm. I look towards the great players of the Super Magical Cup to find these new deck lists for me. A-Chan is a very big regular, though, who's done a lot of research, and I'm yeah. sure is very familiar with Angry Groceries yeah. after last week. So A-Chan has improved a lot upset. since since Absolutely. We've, we've seen week him after start. week. Patriots 34 is another regular player and also a good tournament player. Uh, I believe finished mm -hmm. highly in some of Galadan's tournaments, some of, uh, I think, Clash with Ashes tournaments as well mm -hmm. during Royale Tourney Week, so another proven. King K is, I believe, third on the qualifier point list. Nice. So another... He's uh, been working hard, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Trainer Chris, yeah. uh, beyond reproach. I think another elite gaming, maybe. It could be in the wrong clan, but... Yeah, uh, I, I, f I always pair Trainer Chris and Trainer Nick together, and they kind of rise together, too. I wonder yeah. what their story is. And let's see, let's finish up. Well, of course, Inner Lowell, of course, mm -hmm. we're all very familiar with yeah. from past uh, events. Clyde, the Super Magical Cup Season 1 
Invitational winner, the season winner, one yeah. championship Invitational, yeah. won that event. A uh, visitor I've seen a bunch is usually in the top 16, top 32 round. Definitely mm -hmm. not someone who gets eliminated in the first round or so. Uh, D. Black Rose top eighted last week. Yeah, as well. Yeah, he did. So yeah. we've we've got some really, and that's something interesting about kind of our invite format now is right out of the gates we have some very very strong players kind of heading up each other, and, and it gets harder and harder because before in Super Mantle Cup, the first round was really really fun in the sense that you got to see the best players f facing a lot of unknown names. Yeah. And you you had no idea, right? And one of the big storylines about Super Magical Cup number one is that there would be first-time contenders in Super Magical Cup who would go all the way to the finals. Absolutely. And I think this time around, it's going to be even more intense because they have already proven themselves as players. The first, these even these new names are players who have proven themselves in one way or another through the qualifiers. Absolutely, like, there's no there's no chumps in the field, which is a good time where as we start to get into the games, the games should be starting uh, any second now. We're gonna start doing our spectating. If you would like to join Super Magical Cup Season Two, go to supermagicalcup.com, scroll down to the big sign up button, and go ahead and sign up. We send out weekly emails. They're gonna go out on Monday starting this week that have qualifier names, times, all that sort of stuff, so you can find in game qualifier tournaments play in those and earn qualifier points to get into our weekly bracketed event. It's going to be awesome for the rest of season two. We're going to see a lot of improvements if you keep tuning in. We are uh, in our in construction studio in the next month or so we're going to have an official studio for the Super Magical Cup. Yeah. We're expanding to run more qualifiers with both more people and shorter time frames. We've heard your feedback about mm -hmm. the lengths of our existing qualifiers. And uh, yeah, we got another, what? two months until the finals of the yeah. season two championship on September 24th. So make sure to get in. There's still plenty of time to earn these points mm -hmm. and uh, get involved in season two yeah. yourself. Really excited to see what, what that championship shapes up to be. Currently, it seems like Woody is the one and only person to, to be maintaining his kind of secure, safe spot. As, Malcade's as in second place, though, so Malcade's That's certainly true. not someone to uh, dismiss right off the bat. And I feel like ever since kind of, I feel like season two of the Super Magical Cup kind of gets paired up with like the tournament patch that, that Supercell released and kind of the new meta that came with it. And I feel like Malkate as a player has suddenly suddenly transformed himself to a yes. pretty good player to like a really, really good player. Yeah, and that was somebody was who was definitely in. in the, we weren't sure about Malkate. Yeah. Like we, we, we did see some consistent performances, but they were top eights, maybe one top four. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't somebody who consistently made the finals and we thought yeah. like, wow, this is a real good one. But yeah. once the tournament format came out, our mouths were mm -hmm. shut. I mean, several third, Top three yeah. finishes in those those big 800 player and events. Actually, super interesting. Now that I'm recalling, it actually was even. I think it was more to do with him as a player because in the Invitational in the season one finale, he did really, really, really well, and then he kind of piggybacked off the changes and then continued to do extremely well. Yeah, and and it's kind of the timing of his kind of growth is, is kind of mm -hmm. very, very interesting to look at. So Malkit is definitely a play, player to watch out for as well as Woody with the top two of our leaderboard. And interestingly enough, if you guys want to find out who the most competitive Clash Royale players are and want a leaderboard that actually tells you what the story is, mm -hmm. join the Super Magical Cup and add your name to that list because we feel like we hold some of the most competitive players. Absolutely. I mean, scene. there's so many just tournament studs in this format. Do you want to jump right into some of the matches? Yeah, let's, 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 let's do it. live spectate the first match or so. And where we go in, in, in game. game. Here we go. Oh, they're in Builder's Workshop. All right, Builder's Workshop. <laughs> and we've got last week's top four finisher, Flash. Yeah. So we're going to jump right in so you can see a top four finisher from last week. What do we got started off? So uh, Inferno Tower right in the middle. He threw out a, a kind of scouting hog rider, mm -hmm. uh, as I would say. Kind of a lot of the the things that you start to notice when you play a lot of tournament level games is that if you have something like a hog rider or something like a mortar or something like a giant push just throw your combo out at the starting and sometimes the card cycle favors you and a small investment like four elixir is enough to to research your opponent and see okay he has an inferno tower as a response good information and also the risk can pay off for you in, in the sense that you might be able to take a lot of health off their tower just because they don't have the cards in hand to deal with it Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's something, if you're going to build a line of play throughout the course of a game, it doesn't really help you to overcommit really early on because you yeah. sort of revealed your poker hand. So see, like, yeah. by opening with Hog the first time and then opening with Goblins now, he can sort of see mm -hmm. what's going to work. Both, though, repelled pretty easily by the Inferno yeah. Tower. So it was Inferno Tower Zap for a 7 elixir combination, uh, and Slim Shay attempted to do Hog Rider Melee Goblin plus Zap, so that's about a, a 8, eight yeah. elixir. 
So he lost one more elixir and didn't do any damage. And Not Flash exactly is the greatest. Getting, uh, elixir collectors. Of course. Off the back of that. I think Slim Shay might have to just save the fireball for it. We'll, we'll kind of see. I don't know if I like that's kind of an overcommitment to the miner when really the goblins are the damage dealers. Yeah. Up oh, a 300 damage wasn't too bad overall. Yeah. It's it's not a it's not a it's not a crippling mistake, but that might come back to bite him farther down into this match. Um, if his if his execution continues to, to be a little less than perfect, Flash might be able to capitalize on that. Sure. And we already know that Flash is a great player. So Do we know where the um, Flash drive is? It's actually uh, it's on my desk. Got it. It's on my desk. So at some point We'll go grab it, yeah. yeah. I, we we need it if we transfer those images over to the hard drive, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. I keep forgetting to do that. All right, Princess out to take care of the goblins, and it does just fine. And actually, off the back of that counter push, we saw that uh, Slim Shea played the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Ice Wizard on defense. It pushed across the bridge and did a lot of damage to that left side tower for Flash. And so, you know, we were talking about little kind of judgment errors on, on how he's going to commit Elixir, but the reality of it is that Miner was pounding on the tower and not on the units. Full health, pushing back. Still elixir that uh, Flash needs to deal with, and he took a lot of tower damage. This hog bomber is very interesting. So we've <laughs> tried the goblins and whatnot before, and I like that he's trying not just the fireball, but like just other supporting troops. Mm -hmm. I think what he's gonna have to do though is put the goblins in front of the hog rider and not behind it. Yeah. But it seems like Slim Shea is just feeling forced to use those goblins to defend against the uh, the miner and the mini peck and those sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. Something interesting, when, whenever we talk about Inferno Towers, I just have to reference Pompeo's execution to oh, try to get yeah. around Inferno Towers. And, you know, upon a lot of a further investigation, things like Spear Goblins and Goblins are, are, are really great to use if you know that your player is going to play an Inferno Tower, but the I, most ideal cards are actually minions. Just yes. because minions can fly across a bridge and they're closer to the middle of the map, so it's much quicker to get them in front of your unit, if you yes. can imagine what I'm I mean, about. honestly, I, I have become a better player from watching Pompeo and other Super Magical Cup players using uh, the minions to counter Inferno Tower. I didn't usually know what to do against Inferno Tower, but watching the sort of parallel minions and they fly in front and distract mm -hmm. has really given me a way around that. It's unfortunate that Slim Shea doesn't seem to have uh, something to distract. Yeah, he's having a with. very, very difficult time pushing past that Inferno Tower. And especially in double elixir, it's very hard to catch your opponent off guard in terms of having him way too sure. low on elixir. Um, this Inferno Tower can be cycled pretty quick. Flash's deck is very low on elixir cost. And uh, zap, again. zap, I mean, Zap on Flash's side is really hurting because anytime he plays the Goblins to try to protect the, the Hog Rider in any way, right, the, the, the Zap just takes down the Goblins. And so there Flash will take that handily. And I think this was a lot of, uh, this demonstrates kind of Flash's ability to kind of refocus and make sure that he continues to play consistently. Lost a lot of health on his left side tower, but then just kind of got it together. And was able to consistently fireball down and do little bits of chip damage as a minor deck does. Sure. And win the, and win the match. So. Oh, we got game one of Grubby Asmar. You want to take a look at this one here? Yeah, let's, let's go see. ahead and take a look. Let's go to the match preview. Grubby versus Asmar, and Grubby's going to be using that Ice Spirit. I always love to see it. an Ice Spirit it. duel, oh, in both fact. both of them are using Ice Spirit. Ooh, that's interesting, because uh, Ice Spirit's a card that I you can kind of see even uh, really involved players are just now starting to get to tournament cap. Asmar has a level 8 Ice Spirit, which is, you know, fine to play in level 9. I personally, like, still haven't gotten mine caught up to my other commons or anything like that yet. So uh, this will be interesting, because I, I think everyone out there is wondering, you know, what do we do with Ice Spirit? How do we play this? And mm -hmm. it's interesting because we have Triple Legendary on Grubby's side, and Asmar has opted to instead play a Hog Rider over a Princess. And that's a pretty big divergence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a Hog Rider over a Princess, and he's opted not to use Barbarians. And so kind of the extra cost that you would gain by playing a Princess versus the Hog Rider, Grubby kind of sacrifices by playing a 5 Elixir Commitment card. Absolutely. In the Barbarians. Well, let's jump into it. Yeah, let's go ahead See and... See I, uh, I gotta do, yeah, match start. Boop. Grubby Asmar. Talking in game. Boink. There we go. Now I believe, I think, let's see if there's some micro here. Let's see if Grubby can really line up his peasants to his elixir collectors and really maximize that, that collection there. Yep. Princess <laughs> as the answer. And Ooh. he zaps away the goblins and he's gonna take a decent amount of damage from the miner actually. Yeah, I liked, I understand what he was doing there. He was trying to play the princess as the zap and then sort of panicked and realized like, I can't, I can't yeah. afford to take yeah. 500 damage from these things. Yeah. One stab from three goblins is a lot of damage on your tower. Yeah. And the princess doesn't kill them either. So it yeah. would take two princess shots. And that's probably two in a bunch. That's, you know? it, could, it could even be you know upwards of yeah 800 or so damage depending yeah. on it. Yeah. I, I like that good, that risk management. Yeah. I like that. 
Still taking a lot of pressure on this left side tower and another miner tags on. The Ice Wizard tags onto the miner, but that's a lot of damage adding up for the miner. The first time the miner struck, it did 500 damage alone because the goblins were sat down, and then the subsequent pushes pushed that health down to 1.2k. And I think Grubby is off to a really bad start, and that goes to what we were talking about in terms of card cycling, right? You just don't have the cards in hand to really deal with what your opponent does initially. It'll be interesting to see the interactions between these two relatively similar decks, but there's two different cards, right? Uh, Asmar is running the Hog Rider instead of the Princess, which is kind of odd, right? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, Grubby is running Barbarians, mm -hmm. I think, instead of Goblins. Yeah. So there's a, certainly like a big difference there where if Grubby's Barbarians can really block Asmar's Hog Rider, then the, mi the whole like minor cycling back and forth I think really favors Grubby over a, long, over yeah. a longer period. Yeah. So Grubby has kind of given up his Elixir Collector plan. He had one out, he wasn't able to extend that to two, and he's going to restart from, from step one and, and start building up that double Elixir. Mm -hmm. And notice the placement. He's placing it tilted towards the right so that Fireball can't hit it. Mm -hmm. Fireball doesn't reach it if it's, if it's tilted away from it. But it's also in a, a place where if the Miner pops up next to it, both towers are going to shoot yeah. it down. Yeah. So he's doing a really good job at defending oh, his, oh. his purple economy mm -hmm. against the incoming miners, but the damage is still getting through on those towers. Yeah, yeah, and, oh. and Grubby's coming closer and closer, but the question is, does he have enough time, right? 918 health on that tower is not bad, and this is a big push coming Ooh. across. He's actually ignoring that miner, so that's actually three elixirs He's that going he doesn't for the push, have to deal yeah. with it. But it might be paying off, too, because look at that! Oh! oh. No. Talk about losing the battle but winning the war, right? Yeah. You had an ability there where he was like, oh, I'm going to take a lot of damage from this miner, but it's okay because I'm going to try and commit for this push. Yeah. And those plans, you know, it's good if it works out, and it sure does right here. Yeah, and, and that's kind of interesting because typically you would play your miner aggressively just because of the fact that it yeah. can pop up anywhere on the map, but that's three elixir that Grubby, that basically Asmar threw away in that push. Yeah, I mean, you can tell now how uh, important it is to run things like Fireball and other direct damage spells because Asmar, with only Zap in his deck, has no way to actually punch through damage on that on that tower. He's got to hope for a successful minor push, and uh, it's hard to it's hard to get a miner to work when they're ready for it. You know, when all I have to do is just play surround my towers with mm -hmm. stuff, it's going to be hard to punch mm -hmm. through that damage. I really like the way Grubby played out that last that last bit. 330 health is not a lot of health to have on the tower. He could have easily gone to overtime. Grubby adjusted his elixir collector positioning farther up so the hog rider would be attracted, and then he was waiting for the miner oh. to pop up and pop up and use the ice spirit actually to tag onto the to tag onto the miner. I'm start turning off the bracket here. We're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we don't want to see too many spoils now, because we're gonna start watching older. Like we're gonna start watching these match previews, so we can. Uh, what about this one? Who, who's well, playing what deck? We That's... already saw who won that match. Want to make sure we're showing someone who's not getting. But here we go. Stevo and Artizzi has not been uh, revealed on the bracket yet. So let's take this. Not one players on. that we're too particularly familiar with. I don't think these are, I believe, both new faces, and that's what. Part of the goal of the Super Magical Cup is, of course, to search the Clash Royale community for the best players in the game. We think we have the best players already, but there's always room for more. And so these two players have done well in the qualifiers, are able to sign up and show up to the Invitational. And let's see if we've got maybe a new star of the Super Magical Cup series mm -hmm. in this game. What do, you, what do these decks look like to you? Steve-O is running the Royal Giant deck. He's running a form of the Royal Giant deck with poison added on. Our discussion earlier before we started watching matches talking about how Royal Giant didn't seem to be that popular in tournament formats. I, I'm concerned for Stevo's uh, uh, safety here. Artizzi, on the other hand, is running a deck that I think we both know is very, very, very effective yeah. in tournament format. The Minor Furnace archetype is interesting to me because it seems like one of the... It was an archetype that originally just was a triple legendary deck. It was like triple mm -hmm. legendary plus Furnace. And then people really liked the minus furner, Minor Furnace interaction so well that they started... Um, switching the deck, and the, it's the only deck I can think of that actually removed legendaries. Like, people opted for Musketeer over Ice Wizard. They wanted, you know, maybe Valkyrie in this case instead of Princess. And I think that's a really cool showing that it's not always just about playing the legendaries, that yeah. oftentimes there are rare and uh, common and epic cards that fill that yeah. role a little better. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and jump in this, into this game and see, see how it transpires. Something interesting to note about minor decks in general is that they're very... Similarly to Hog Cycle, it's a lot about chippy damage, right? You're really looking to just, you have the Miner Swing once or twice, play into that three minute overtime and eventually take down that tower. Having Poison, having Furnace, all of that just adds on to that element of I'm just going to slowly chip away at your tower health and do consistent damage, play good defense, and then eventually win by taking your tower down. A War of Attrition. And I think that's why it works so well in tournament play because it's such a low risk method of playing. 
Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, if you're the, oh, well, I got one fire spirit actually did a, a zaps, the zaps yeah. work right there, taking yeah. out those minion hordes. And now that zap would be, was able to finish all, yeah. all the Yeah. The downside of something like those minor decks, though, is it requires your push to get off. You have to make those successful pushes multiple times per game, right? Yeah. It's not... It's not like, oh, you pulled off this big surprise strategy once. You have to keep doing it. Yeah. So you see that really successful minor players are the ones who can play their minor in different spots on everything. Like, they're not predictable yeah. with their play. Yeah. And look, wow. Look at how... I mean, Whew. we're talking about chippy damage, but that... I mean, that's that's also one of the reasons why these decks run things like the mini peck on a musketeer. Yeah. Because then that's what, that's what gives you the ability to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes, right? Yeah. Because if you don't have that ability in your deck, really your opponent can just play willy-nilly and you don't really have a, an, a method of kind of making sure that you're punishing them for that. Right. And having the Musketeer, having the mind, uh, Mini P.E.K.K.A., these are cards that can do a ton of damage if, if you keep mm -hmm. them unchecked. And I, I really liked Stevo's play of getting the poison down on nice. the Furnace, even though it's a 4 for 4 and it seems like, well, it's mostly just like an Elixir even yeah. trade. What uh, I really like, I mean, I don't think you at home may not realize how good poison is against spawners, right? Because yeah. it does a fireball's worth of damage. It mm -hmm. slows the spawn speed, which means that your spawner over the time will make fewer spawns. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kills the spawns that come out during it, preventing them from ever getting there. So, like, yep. this furnace is going to produce fewer spawns, take have lower hit points, and really not attack for some period of time mm -hmm. while the poison's going on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Steve-O doesn't have a way to seem to deal with the miner, but yeah. at least he's got a plan to stop the furnace from overwhelming him. And, and we, were, we were kind of talking about this World like Giant Dex. World Giant decks, I think, f have a very, very hard time dealing with, with these small chippy decks, especially because most of the cards for RTZ are really, really cheap, and yeah. they're really, really great defensive cards. I mean, he's got he's got two-thirds of the trifecta here, yeah. and then on top of that, he's got the Fred is assisting, and then he's got the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And the Mini P.E.K.K.A. kind of functions like one of the trifecta cards, right? It attacks yeah. like a Hog Rider in that like you have to deal yeah. with it right away. Yeah. I think, oh, well, actually, it's a little closer. The damage is a little closer than we may have initially thought. It looks like uh, Steve-O might be able to tie there. up this tower yeah, here. That last, that last defense that Steve-O put together with that Royal Giant where he played at the oh, bridge. Look at that. Doing a lot of damage. Just <gasps> one, one or more. two goblins. Wow, two out of the three Spear Goblins attacked and that was all Steve-O needed, which was, you know, good for him still in the game. And to talk a oh, little he's leaking bit elixir more. now, though. Oh, there it is. Oh, goodness. That, that is a full health mini P.E.K.K.A. And the minions are going to be a good response in Poison. However, they're not going to last too long. They last long enough, though. That I think it's worth it to cast them, yeah. even though. The downside, though, is once again, Steve-O doesn't... He and seems the Musketeer. To be oh, nice. Oh. Barbarian's in front. Still took a damage, though. You can see at the effectiveness of the Furnace against yeah. the Barbarians. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I'd like to call out is, that, you know, Royal Giant is a card that we talked earlier in the pre-show that people were yeah. really afraid of on the ladder, but not so much in tournaments. You can kind of see it here. Uh, Steve-O's Royal Giants haven't been terribly effective. Almost mm -hmm. That entire tower's almost gone down solely on, uh, on poison damage. Yeah. Because yeah. in a deck that has, what, Musketeer mm -hmm. and Furnace and Mini P.E.K.K.A., that six elixir kind of goes to waste. It rarely yeah. does six elixir yeah. worth of damage. And kind of the style of the Royal Giant decks too, as we were mentioning, as opposed to a chippy deck that does small bits of damage at one time, the Royal Giant deck is much more reliant on, on kind of making a big play, overpowering your, your opponent's defenses, and then having the Royal Giant or maybe kind of a Musketeer or whatever supporting troops that yeah. have high damage behind it kind of push the tower down a lot of health at one go. Now, definitely one of the big advantages of the Royal Giant archetype is that if you take one tower, you have a really good advantage on the second yeah. tower. Playing Royal Giant in oh, the middle no. allows it to almost automatically attack, but at this point, I just don't think he can push through a full tower's health of damage before the poison takes it out. Yeah, and there we go. Artizzi grinds it out. And Artizzi, even though it's actually testament to the power of Royal Giant, look how long that thing survived, yeah. right? Like, I mean, it felt like Artizzi was in control the entire game, yet... Stifo was only a thousand damage away from winning yeah, that game. Yeah, and and really, I mean, the Royal Giant itself undeniably is a strong card, despite the fact that it might be on equal levels in tournament in tournament play. But the big key point here is just the fact that the Royal Giant costs six elixir against a deck that constantly throws fire spirits at you, has miners popping up at for three elixir costs, and then has small troops constantly pestering you and causing you to play elixir for defense. Very very hard to get a Royal Giant push started. Yeah, for sure. Let's. What about this one? Actually, I kind of, I kind of would be down to watch game two of their series while we're, yeah, they're getting caught up. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look. So at this is they switch. Uh, Artizzi has to switch decks yeah. because in our format, both players register two decks that are at least four cards different. If you, it's a best two out of three match, but each of your decks have to win. So if you yep. win with one deck, you got to switch to your other deck. Artizzi yep. won switches to a giant balloon deck. It looks mm -hmm. like for game two, and if he wins this one, wins the match. 
Yeah, and this is super interesting too because this tells us something about Artizia as a player is that he likes to play a variety of styles. A Royal Giant deck and a Giant Balloon deck are very different in many ways. Well, I'm sorry, Steve-O had the Royal Giant deck, so that it was the oh, Minor yeah, Furnace. Sorry. Minor right, Furnace and I Giant mean. Balloon are still very different though, you're yeah, right. they're like, very different, yeah, sorry. But uh, Steve-O is gonna <laughs> ride or die on this, uh, on this Royal Giant deck, so let's see if that brings it home for him. Also interesting to note that despite the fact that the kind of arrows has been out of the meta for a while. I sure. think it's starting to with people playing things like giant balloon. The balloon players are starting to favor arrows because what is your biggest fear as a balloon player is minions, right? Any kind of minions. And mm -hmm. having the arrows to deal with that is really really important because princess, zap, they do hurt the minions a lot, but the minions will still swing a few times and and, and kill yeah. the balloon. I mean, you can even see the fragility of of the royal giant. The low health point of the royal giant, a thousand health less than a cheaper normal giant, means that if there's some high damage thing that comes down, you have a very small time window to react to yeah. it. So you saw the mini P.E.K.K.A. came down right there, and Stevo just like didn't have like what can you play? Like minions maybe? You could play barbs, but they're slow to get there. Yeah. Like by the time they walk around the giant, it's already dead. And that's why a lot of players, especially for something like balloon, favor the cheaper, mm -hmm. more hit point mm -hmm. giant, right? Interesting minions have been committed for almost no real wow. purpose. The giant is at full health and Artizia is at the elixir advantage. He has a one pump's worth coming at him and he has the balloon in hand. This might be a big push for Steve-O to handle. The, yeah. the, the, the cannon and the ice wizard are going to be instrumental in defending this push. Wow, those guards plus princess are really chopping up those barbarians too. Uh, oh, skeletons, no. guards do a good amount of damage. They do more damage than normal skeletons. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously they can't be zapped because of their great effect. That's two hits from the balloon. And I think he's going to take the tower down. Even just the guards finish it up. Wow. Yeah. So that's so the interesting thing there is Stevo played a very popular move. He played the elixir collector, and then he played, and then rather Artizzi played the elixir collector, and then Stevo played the poison on top of it, which is a very popular move in right. tournament format. But he paid a heavy price for that. Yeah, and even again, like so, we're talking about the royal giant. He, it the mini, the mini packet takes it out in four shots. Was that worth it for six elixir? I'm not yeah. really sure, especially when it leaves a full health mini P.E.K.K.A. Yeah. coming back at you. Yeah, and, and Steve-O played the additional three elixir on it, his minions to yeah. defeat the mini P.E.K.K.A., but the important thing is, it's not just the fact that you spent three elixir to defeat the mini P.E.K.K.A., you spent minions against a balloon deck to take down a mini P.E.K.K.A. That's a very that's good point. point. That's actually, because right now you can see the giant balloon push comes through, because from Artizzi's standpoint, he's like, cool, the thing that I'm worried about, mm -hmm. the minions are gone. Yeah. Yeah, and he still has arrows and in back hand. Now. Uh, and you see, that's the that's that's the thing right now, especially in double elixir. The cycle can go pretty fast, but mm -hmm. Artizzi actually had the win condition in his hand. He had the arrows ready and prepped. He just needed to make the right read. Right. right. So it's still very risky, and and that this was something, and this is one of the reasons why Steve lost his tower in, in the first part. He wasn't in double elixir, and he couldn't actually mm -hmm. cycle fast enough. So it's very important to, to Ooh, make sure you're spending your cards. Great right. defense by Steve-O, both with the ice wizard to immediately freeze the whole push, and then the cannon on the right side to draw the balloon away. Yep. He's trying to diversify the damage between the king tower and the crown tower, which is very smart. Oh, and here comes that royal giant in the middle. There's we not a lot of damage on the board. And there's already an ice wizard there to kind of slow it down, and the poison. Ooh, ooh that's a really good that's poison, too. That's a big too. push. It should stop, maybe not the entire. Uh oh. But here comes that giant balloon. Now, does Steve-O have what he needs? He does have the minions. Great answer. Oh, look at the mini P.E.K.K.A. though. That's a big lot of health left on that mini P.E.K.K.A. Oh, giant gets one swing. Close. The fact that Artizzi right now is playing the giant in an aggressive position, but that also allows Steve to instantly surround the giant yeah. before Artizzi ha even has the time to build up Elixir to assist the giant. Right. And so I think almost for, and we will actually Ooh. hold that thought for a moment, the poison is going to do a lot. One more shot, and he's just one poison away from actually taking this tower down. Steve-O right, is going to need to but defend this time? push. He does have he doesn't have enough elixir for the ice wizard though, or the cannon. The things uh, that he really I think needs. He needs to, the cannons. Oh, the cannon yes, pulled back a nice. little bit, but it didn't take any damage. And oh no, the balloon's going to get in there. It's good. one. He's going to need to zap. He zaps it, but he's going to get another shot. I think. No. Oh, oh he gets it. Only 135 he left. To, I think he should just play the Royal Giant right now. Oh my god! Oh, it's electric <laughs> blocked! And that leaves the princess to no, take it down! I lost! Oh. No, Pam, I lost! I played the Royal Giant and the Elixir Collector is playing. <laughs> oh my god. That was great. Hey, that was an excellent game. That was. I'm so glad Artizzi, Stevo, I hope to see more of them in, in uh, as, well, Artizzi more of in this game. But that was uh, great. Guards are another card that have really surprised me. That's a card that we didn't see a lot of in the ladder because I think it's a newer card. It's an epic, so most people don't have them leveled up. But once we get into these tournament formats, crazy to see what, you know, some of the, the cool uses of that card.
Well, we're not going to let the matches stop right there. We've got a few more matches here in Group A. And then maybe feel, we'll jump to Group B after? Sure. I feel salty for that loss because... <laughs> I mean, this is why I I'm love, not a tournament player, but... Hey, we talk a lot about, in, in tournament play, it's less about playing your deck and more about playing the player. You have yeah. that extra two minutes of overtime to observe and react to what your opponents are doing, mm -hmm. and I think something that we just, I, w I was just really impressed by was that uh, Artizzi knew a Royal Giant was coming. Yeah. Knew it. So he just played an Elixir Collector in the middle, and it <laughs> happened to be a half second before the Royal yeah. Giant came down, and yeah. that saved the entire game. Yeah. And, man, I would love to talk more about it, but the key point there is that if if Stevo had committed the Elixir to actually defend the push yeah. and take down the Princess and defend the guards, Artizzi would have lost, right? For sure, with a poison, and, anything. And, yeah. and Artizzi chose to play the Elixir Collector, so he wasn't going to help his push on the left side. He, right. That was his last hurrah. You're right. right? And he was like, you know what? I'm not even going to attempt... To, to make sure I get this left side tower down at this push because I know the next thing right. that he's going to play. If Steve O had giant. played not to lose, he would have won yeah, basically because exactly. he only needed the poison. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game. This is uh, the last one we're going to watch in Group A, and then we're going to jump to Group B to make sure we get some more screen time for all the other Super Magical Cup competitors. Iams versus Primitive. Iams is someone we see week after week. Another yeah. one of those guys who's always in the top 16, top 32 round, but I think has never made a top eight. Maybe once. Maybe one top eight. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's definitely a name that I've that I've seen around, and and kind of, at least to my recollection, his games have been somewhat interesting. But I don't feel like he's he's ever broken out to kind of like the the champion tier of Super Magical Cup. But what better way than to get practice against so many of these good players, right? Yeah. So let's take a look at the decks that they're running. It's the return of Golem Poison. Uh, Golem is another deck that we've seen a lot less of since the eleventh yeah. Elixir got removed. Yeah. But I still think it's a very strong deck. I think that. It probably is just hurting because of the popularity of Mini P.E.K.K.A. So yeah. let's see, because we have a deck here that doesn't trifecta, run Mini P.E.K.K.A., right? Trifecta without the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Yeah, Trifecta with uh, minions replacing the Skeleton. So yeah. basically, Skeleton got upgraded to minions. Otherwise, the kind of standard Trifecta defense deck. I actually believe that this favors the Golem deck a little bit because... Mm -hmm. All three of those cards take a lot of damage to poison, and they're going to stand in the poison for a pretty significant amount yep. of time. Just because the golem is there, and they're all going to end up tagging mm -hmm. onto the golem yep. eventually. And the golem has mini P.E.K.K.A. and cannon and zap and skeletons, all of which are pretty mm -hmm. good against the hog rider mm -hmm. offense. The other thing to think about is the instant something like a musketeer is committed, and even the minions, how are you going to deal with the princess if you're, all your units are attacking the golem, right? Oh, the princess yeah. added on with that poison might end up doing a ton of damage. Yeah, especially if primitive has to use the poison on defense instead yep. of offense. There's you could have the situations like, well, yeah, you're not going to yeah. be able to hit the, the, the yeah. poison or the princess is hanging out in the back. Yep, yep. So let's see, let's see. I think I think the onus is on primitive to play excellently with his trifecta deck. Which is actually kind of, I mean, the Trifecta deck is kind of the key, I think it's kind of the defining deck to for Control, right? Yeah. And Control is a lot about execution, analysis of, of the lines of play, and executing well. Absolutely. And the onus is further on Primitive just because of the deck matchup. Especially, yeah. I think Primitive is facing a bit of an uphill battle. We just noticed he has a level 6 Hog Rider. Oh, so yeah. He's got an underleveled Hog Rider, and Iams is playing two out of the three best counters for that card, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be very, very tough. Princess Here's makes a switch. Princess to the number one. The Ooh. skeletons are going to actually soak up one shot of damage, so he gets another. Yes. He gets another princess. Shot. Is that worth three? Uh, one elixir, you know, maybe. Yeah, maybe one elixir to do like hundred damage to the tower, yeah. Yeah, maybe. And and maybe he wanted to cycle anyways. Sure. So that's the that's great. Actually, you're right because he's got two collectors out now. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the the wonder of one elixir cards like ice words, mm -hmm. for example. One elixir is very 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 hard to punish, especially with the delay in Clash Royale. Yeah. And and kind of how easy it is, especially now without the eleventh elixir to actually leak. So one elixir is actually almost unpunishable in many ways. Oh, I love ice spirits. I mean, I think that card is something that is really underrated right now in tournament play. People are still trying to find the exact right deck or combination. Mm -hmm. But oh ice spirit God. and something the like the elixir Sparky. all on the floor. I am sitting everywhere. He doesn't know what to do. It's just leaking out of his pockets. He's from just him. falling all over. <laughs> God, purple gunk all over. And that's a bummer because he had to. At one point, I am's had two collectors yeah. out and is now not only. There, there's only one out, but they're about tied in elixir. So whatever yeah. advantage Iams had, yeah. you're supposed to snowball that into mm -hmm. this around this time yeah. to where you're like, oh, I'm way ahead, and then you yeah. play a golem and then you win. Mm -hmm. It seems like all that work from early in the game that Iams did no, got no, that's uh, poison reset. Right there. That's poison. Oh yeah, that's yeah. asking for it. And you know, we were talking about in the previous match how how Stevo got punished for playing poison on the on the collector. 
Primitive is demonstrating exactly why that's such a popular move. Yeah, I mean, right there, we just saw Primitive... I mean, that was five elixir... No, I'm sorry, four elixir plus... Plus the tower plus damage. Seven. It was, I mean, it was a four for seven trade. Yeah. Yeah. Not and, to mention you prevent damage. you even just prevent the long term of like, oh, he'll have elixir a minute from now. Exactly. Like all of the pumps just happen right away. And against the golem tech. That's okay, wow. so he's in double elixir, he's got one collector down, he's gonna play the golem, and the elixir collector is probably gonna get another pump for him. He got yeah. one pump right there. Yeah, who'd have thought that the trifecta deck would be able to out elixir the golem deck? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's, the poison is really, really hurting uh, uh, Iams, and Iams has not been willing to use his poison to cancel out Primitive's Elixir Collector, right. and I think that's a big difference, and that might be the right choice. So he's going to play his poison early on the Princess, Okay. but this is going to make implications. How is he going to deal with Skeletons and Mini P.E.K.K.A., right? Yeah, and the Mini P.E.K.K.A. just gets to walk right through it. Oh, no! Oh, the Skeleton! Oh, my God. Okay. Interesting. Well, the Golem is just standing at the tower now, and you can see how much damage that does. Yeah. A second golem push is gonna spell the end of here comes here comes a pig push though on the on the right side and this oh no look the princess is avoiding the poison down there oh no just one square out of range it doesn't oh, oh <laughs> walks the edge of it it's a game of inches oh this is that this really hurts primitive defensively Iams has the two cards that he needs to, to stop hog rider pushes and Valkyrie kind of is is really just used as kind of a, a tank. In this yeah. scenario, and, and if the Hog Rider pushes the Valkyrie well, then it can change the, the dynamic a little bit. Another key, another key thing is that the uh, using the poison on the Golem push allowed Iams to get two collectors back out, and with the three minute overtime, there's no fear in casting collectors yep. in overtime because you, you the game may go on another seventy seconds. Yep. All right, is the poison gonna come out? Oh no! Oh, it's the done. second Golem. I'm calling it. It's done. Oh, he got a nice job getting the Collector and the low-health Musketeer in there. That poison may kill the Musketeer along with the yeah. Golem Explosions yeah. and some other things. It's, it's, I'm calling it. That's it. You Double think that's it? Oh, yep. wow. Look at that. The Princess. Yeah, it's always the second Golem that does yep. it somehow. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, it's, we see this oftentimes with big body decks, especially with Giant, because Giant is one of the cheapest big bodies that, that you can get. It's kind of the whole in Double Elixir overtime situations. You play the one big giant push, right? You play him in the back behind your king tower. You put all your supporting units down. Your enemy scrambles to defend. And then before your supporting units even make it across the bridge, you play another giant. And they're like, well, now my inferno tower is gone. And I have nothing left to defend the second giant. And it's just going to walk straight up to my tower and start beating down on it. And, uh, you know, when that happens with golems instead of giants, you're in a world of pain. Oh, absolutely. So we've got some pretty good, uh, yeah, let's try this one out. Let's try yeah. group B. Yeah, let's go ahead and do uh, do you want to, I try to, which one's your desk? Oh, I'll go uh, grab it. It's in front of Lucas's. Okay, it's cool. on the other side. I'll be right back so we can get more of those images, the little featured images. All right. And uh, while Rumham is grabbing that, let's go ahead and take a look at Trainer Chris. Let's see how he's been doing. Trainer Chris versus Kermini. And Trainer Chris is going to be running a minor deck that includes guards, which is very popular in, in, in the current meta. Guards kind of have risen to very, very popular status, and uh, I think rightfully so, because they're such a good card in terms of damage, defense, and cost. Just a very solid card all around. Meanwhile, on Kermini's side, he's going to be running a Royal Giant deck with Triple Legendary. And I almost don't know what to think about this. Triple Legendary is very versatile, and it's one of the reasons that a lot of people play it. Very versatile, very cheap, but I don't know how that synergizes with the Royal Giant, and Kermit doesn't even have an Elixir Collector, so the Royal Giant, the expensive cost of the Royal Giant, and kind of the cycly, low-cost nature of, of the Triple Legendary, that might work well together, but we'll have to see. We will have to see. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, hopping in game. If it will let me click. <laughs> oh no, X split. If I can click anything. Oh, weird. Huh. There it is. It's starting to do. So Chrome works, but X split doesn't. <laughs> oh no, I want to pause the match. Oh gosh. Yeah, let's do Task Manager, I guess. Man, this game is happening, but you guys can't see the excitement. <laughs> oh no, X Split, wow. <laughs> oh no. There's even a new unit being featured, and you guys are missing it. Don't tease the fine folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, please. 
Wow, that's so weird. Having like a full computer meltdown. Oh, there oh, it is. Alright, oh, oh. we got something. Oh. That's fine. Alright. That's there we go. Broken USB drive was good enough. There it is. Cool. <laughs> is that are are we okay? It's I guess. I don't know. Are we okay? I think we're alright. Get some weird some weird buggy boos there. Alright, so I think we gotta get in oh, we're not oh yeah, we are in game now. Woohoo, yeah. buddy! This one's not going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody. So let's take a look. Trainer Chris here, who is, I mean, like, certainly one of the most accomplished, best uh, tournament yeah. players I've oh, ever seen. Oh, no! Uh, I wonder why you play the princesses instead of the mini P.E.K.K.A. He played the guards down there. Yeah. I think the guards were the plan. Yeah. The mounted tagged onto the elixir collector and did a good bit of damage, though. And uh, Trainer Chris, he's gonna be able to get another elixir collector down. But and there's nice. that mini. Oh, the mini Pekka. No, just died. Oh, it's still alive. It's still in the middle oh, there. Look at that. Oh no! Little head mini Pekka. That's why you gotta use it on. You gotta put it with the guards on offense. That's an yeah. incredibly tough thing to deal with because Zap doesn't kill anything against that, right? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. guards can surround and eat up quite a few tower shots. Guards actually at tournament cap take four tower shots each. They take yeah. three shots to break the yeah. shield and one shot to kill them. And the thing that I love the most about guards with mini P.E.K.K.A. is the fact that if you play small chumpy cards like you would to defend against mini P.E.K.K.A., guards do a very, very good job of ensuring, extending the mini P.E.K.K.A.'s lifeline so that they can deal with it and also protecting the mini P.E.K.K.A. from being chewed up by maybe something like goblins themselves. Sure. You know? And the guards do enough damage that they kill the low health units. And I think at this point, it's all just on Trainer Chris. I mean, he's got the guards to block the mini P.E.K.K.A., which is great for him, right? And then he has... Oh, if his mini P.E.K.K.A. survives, which looks like it just got chopped up... Ah, actually, yeah. that fireball is going to take out everything nice. that you're worried about yeah. there. Yeah. You know, minor decks normally are in trouble when they play minor on defense, but that one kind of worked out for Trainer Chris. That yeah. wasn't too bad. Yeah. And I, I mean, right now, def defense is the name of the game for Trainer Chris, yeah. right? He, he is more than willing to pay Elixir inefficient trades to just right. make sure his tower doesn't go down. And oh my god, the mini pecker got like three swings on that! Oh no, Kermany. Kermany. Great. Well, uh, I have a confession to make. Your your red Sparky and blue balloon probably are not Sparky and balloon. Oh no. You're probably not Sparky and balloon because I was going in and switching. You're switching around? Yeah. Make source. Yeah. Ooh, here's one I gotta see. Uh, yeah, Ooh, we were just talking good. about this matchup. Yeah. Actually, I like... So, yeah, uh, Justin for the win, a two-time final, a one-time winner, second-time finalist, yeah. against regular A-Chan. Now, here's a version I've been playing. I like the Trifecta deck, switching out Ice Spirit for Skeletons as the one-cost yeah. card. So I'm glad that A-Chan's playing this list. I'd like to see how he does with it. Yeah. What do you think about Justin for the wins? Uh, he's got the Miner, the Miner Furnace deck. Yeah, I mean, Miner, Poison, Furnace. These three cards, I feel like they synergize so, so well on many fronts. First of all, on kind of the chipping tower health damage, which we talked about a little bit. Second of all, countering elixir collectors. And third of all, just making sure that your units like the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the musketeer and your guards have something sensible to assist them. The poison gets rid of chumpy units that you would use to defend against the mini P.E.K.K.A. The miner protects the mini P.E.K.K.A. from, from aggro as well as the musketeer. It's just a lot of synergies that work well together. And so I feel like this deck is that that's one of the reasons why it's so solid these three cards much like how the three legendaries synergize with each other mm -hmm. very well these three cards the miner the furnace and the and poison synergize with each other equally. Yeah, and I like some of the meta choices that Justin's making in his, his minor furnace deck. Uh, opts to play the Musketeer over the Ice Wizard because between Zap, Poison, and Princess, you don't really, and Furnace, you don't really need the splash damage. You just need the range and the single target damage. Yep. He plays Musketeer instead. And then I like Guards as just anti minor, anti hog rider, mm -hmm. gums up a lot of stuff. It'll mm -hmm. be really interesting to see how this, uh, this one goes. Mm -hmm. In the current meta, Guards are just very, very valuable. Yeah, most people don't see them, so they don't they don't play a lot against them. Be, uh, they don't play against them on the ladder very much, so they don't like think about them. They don't really count them into their game plans. Guards are another card that I would say, as recently as you know, two weeks ago, people didn't think it was as strong as, as it turned out to be. I'm really interested to see how successful Achan's uh, Ice Spirit Trifecta deck can work, especially because he swapped out the skeletons for Ice Spirit. He actually has no other chumpy units, right? He he only has the musketeer, the Valkyrie, and the cannon for for defense. That that's it. Yeah, Justin's always been someone who gets away with uh, light defense as well. Like yeah. I've always seen the, the like even remember back when he was not playing Elixir Collector and he would just play like cannon and Ice Wizard and Zap, and that was the only defense he had, and it was yeah. good enough to stop like every push. Yeah. I mean, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but is is I, I feel like Justin was a player we were talking about where we were like, how do you defend? How do you stop princesses if you only have Zap? Was that Justin? Yes, because it was Interlol who got four princesses out yeah. against Justin because Justin's deck had no way to kill princess. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he really he really likes his aggressive play. And, and most Furnace decks have, have some element of defense, and that's why they have the Ice Wizard. Right? I mean, Furnace itself is, a, is an underrated defensive card. Furnace trades with the Hog evenly. So mm -hmm. four for four, right? Which is not maybe the, the best thing you'd ever want to do. It's kind of like a Tesla. But, I mean, given that Hog Rider is one of those all or nothing things, like if you, you can stop Hog Rider and take no damage or maybe one swing, but yeah. if you get caught with your pants down against a Hog Rider, that's the whole tower. Like, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. So there are times where you'd want to play Furnace as a defense against Hog Rider, and, you know, that's... a. Mm -hmm. A good thing to say for a spawner building, which are normally not that good on defense. Yeah. Oh no, the poison's gonna hurt the furnace a lot though, but good pull with the mini Pekka, pulls the Valkyrie away. Is mini Pekka the, the MVP of this meta? I would say so. I mean I think it's it's a card that is the most necessary. Not really the card because it's 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 great defensively, but much like barbarians in, in a in a weird sure. kind of way, much like barbarians, the, once it crosses a bridge, it's actually pretty easy to handle just because of its movement speed and also yeah. its health. But you have to answer. Yeah. it's not like it's one of the things where there are many times where I just don't answer minions or don't answer ice wizard. Yeah. Right, just let them do like two hundred damage. Who cares? Whatever yeah. the tower will clean them up. If but in the case of Pekka and answer, barbarians, yeah. you can't not respond. Yep. Oh no, that hog rider actually did a lot of damage off the back of that poison and Absolutely. the musketeer to help. Traded with the other musketeer. Achan's really using his poisons well to prevent uh, Justin from ever building up like a double furnace setup mm -hmm. in any way. Here comes the ice Oh, the nice spirit! Oh! oh! And it rides around the mini Pekka! The mini Pekka's disabled for long enough and the Valkyrie wow. cleans it up. Man. Wow. Talk about aggression. I mean, Achan is putting it on. Ice spirit. What a card. Ice Spirit is so great. So you can see that was a way for Achan to get around the Mini Pekka. Like every deck either runs Barbs or Mini Pekka. Skeletons are kind of decent, are, are really good on defense. Mm. But that Ice Spirit mm. as an offensive play mm -hmm. is what really helps separate some of these hog pushes yeah. from what other deck can put together. Justin. Woo! Achan, maybe. Maybe for the upset. Now remember, it's best two out of. Whoa, it's best two out of three, so. Yeah, I don't actually still, know who won hold. that match or yeah. who advanced on, but for that game, A Chan is uh, is yeah. the champion. He played he played it very well. Yes, very very smart play. Oh, let's go ahead and watch. Uh, I want to watch. Uh, actually, I want to kind of catch this one, but it's it's in progress, so I'm going to turn yeah. it right now. Yeah. Let's get some new faces on. Yeah. I believe uh, this one involves. Let's see. What about that one? Oh, that was kind of it. Oh, we try yeah. this one. Yeah, let's let's try it. So we have two other, uh, yeah, right here, this one. Yeah, we're still good. We're yeah, good. Yep. two other new faces to the scene. Mail and Carlos. Now you said you've seen Mail in some of these qualifiers. What have you seen uh, from this from this player? Yeah, I, I've only been able to spectate a, a handful of his games, but generally I feel like he just makes pretty solid decisions. He's playing a Golem Poison deck, and so he's kind of bringing it back. And it's interesting to me because Golem Poison has been this deck that we've been talking about. Like, Golem Poison's great, Golem Poison's great, <laughs> you know? But I feel like every time we go to the Super Magic Cup, aside from that one time a long time ago with, with Ragnar or whatever, sure. right? I feel like Golem decks have kind of demonstrated their strength but never been able to kind of surpass eventually like the mm -hmm. great players. I don't think... Is there a single Super Magic Cup champion that plays a Golem deck? Interlul. Interlul? Yeah, that was... Does he really? It was... Well, um, maybe... It was the one, there was one, it was the one that I solo casted. At the pre-show, I said Golem Poison was like a deck that I wanted to see more of, and that week, somebody won with the Golem Poison deck, and I believe, no, it wasn't Interlul, it was, I'll have to go back and look it at was, it. It was somebody, but it was, I, feel, I wish I was there. Ready. It was like Scrazor, maybe, or something. And maybe. Some, somebody had a giant Poison deck the week that I, that I, week that I talked about but, it. But uh, every time I see somebody play big body decks, like Mail playing yeah, Golem, yeah. I, I'm always just thinking, like, I have that unfulfilled, like, like, I feel like, I feel really bad because I was like, Golem deck is quick. <laughs> quick it's, it's a deck it's that's not good in the in-game tournament system because it often goes deep into overtime, yeah. but it's really good in the bracket format because, you you know, you don't have to play 20 games in an hour in mm -hmm. order to do well. What I'm really excited, though, to see out of Carlos's deck is the uh, Goblin, Goblin Barrel. Barrel. Goblin Barrel is a card that I think is actually is also very underrated. Uh, we'll just go yeah. right into the game and take a look. But yeah, it's just a very underrated... Ah. Uh, a very underrated card to me. It, it has a lot of utility. It counters a lot of stuff. Mm. Uh, mm. Yet it hasn't really found its spot yet. And outside of maybe some of those uh, sparky decks. Interestingly enough, and and I and I think it was Chester, but uh, and you might know he had a goblin. He had a goblin barrel deck. 
I believe Chester. Yeah, it was. It was. It was definitely. Uh, it was YouTube Chester from last week. And he had some very, very amazing moments with the Goblin Barrel deck, where he was losing the match for the majority of the time. The opponent made one mistake, and his Goblin Barrel took down the tower and, and won him the match. There were, there were multiple times that that happened. So I, for Carlos, I want to see the Goblin Barrel do big things for him. I really like seeing yeah. this card. What I what I think most people really underrate Goblin Barrel as it's a princess counter. Uh, he actually, oh, interesting how he's going to use it oh, here. Oh, ooh. that's kind of cool. So he's at the counter ready. Uh, the main uses I see for it is the counter's princess. Mm -hmm. You dump the, the goblins right on their head, and they, they stab her to death right before the tower and the yeah. princess shot kills her. So you can definitely do that. Um, it's also something great in zap bait decks. Like, if you, I see, we've seen goblin barrel in decks like Sparky, yeah. where you want to zap the Sparky, but then mm -hmm. they also play minion horde, where you want to zap yeah. the minion horde. They also play goblin barrel, where you want to zap the goblin barrel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many things that you would love to zap. Uh oh, then looks like might. oh oh they oh wow good, unfortunate for Carlos, good for Mail. The princess was played just a little too far away, oh, and it no. allowed the princess to clean up the Valkyrie, and then they, they killed each other. Mm -hmm. If that was placed a little differently, Carlos's princess would have killed Mail's mm -hmm. and survived. It's super interesting that Mail played the mini Pekka at the right time. The positioning was a little bit off. One of the goblins stabbed onto the tower and it did a ton of damage. So different to the miner. Whereas the miner, you know, even if you, as long as you place a unit in somewhat the right yeah. location, you're act, you're not going to be losing, you know, 500, right. 600 health on your tower. One little mistake against goblin barrel and you lose a ton. Yeah, go it's weird. It's, uh, miner is the tank, right? Yeah. Goblin barrel's like the missile. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's yeah. a, it, the damage is being dealt by a goblin barrel. They do serve similar purposes. Like you're seeing right here. Oh, the tanking. no, this might hurt a lot. Wow. Oh, okay. oh but, but even then. Writer, yeah. Zap was not enough. So that's one of the big reasons we've seen the decline of Golem decks in the ever since the 11th Elixir went away, is that now the most Elixir you can have on defense is two. We mm -hmm. saw uh -oh. Carlos try to take advantage of that uh -oh. by playing the Hog Rider Goblin Barrel. His Mini Pekka's gonna go to town. His Mini Pekka's going uh -oh, to town. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. One, oh, no! Two, that tower's gone. The tower's done. Yep. And the Golem's And he still, still has to do with a Valkyrie and a Princess and a Golem. <laughs> oh, and the Princess goes down! Oh, no. This is oh, looking no, like this is... not looking real good I don't for even know if Carlos has enough damage in his deck to handle this I think, now. honestly, he lost the game when that Hog Rider Goblin Barrel push got countered by, like, a Zap. Like, oh, pretty much a single he's, Zap. He's going to get three crown. <laughs> he is! <laughs> he's oh, actually going to get three crown. One more shot from Princess. Oh, oh no! <laughs> shot. Oh, no! <laughs> The Golem decks. Yeah. I love Golem, buddy. It's it's a good good yeah. archetype. It's really good in this format because those those big dangerous situations like Golem, and then you play another Golem at the river. You when you have three minutes of overtime, you have a lot of situations yeah. to help set that up. Yeah, and and the big thing about playing Golem decks is that oftentimes your opponent will be pressuring your tower down in in a situation where where it's coming close to overtime and you feel like you need to defend and, and not lose your tower or else you lose a match and so a lot of times opponents will not allow you to get into that three minute overtime in a comfortable position where you can just keep playing golems but if you ever do you're you're done yeah no kidding <clears throat> um so we've got Trainer Chris and Patriots 34 up here really excited to see this matchup because we know match. both of these are uh I would say kind of new stars of the in-game tournament system, mm -hmm. right? P players that maybe weren't on the community's wider radar until the Royale tournament week, yeah. and suddenly they're just, you know, top three, top three, top ten, top ten. Like, who yeah. are these guys? Yeah. Uh, and I'm really excited to welcome both of them to the Super Magical Cup and see these uh, this premier matchup. I believe the winner of this matchup moves on to the top 16. It is only one, mm -hmm. one match away from, uh, from the top eight. Advancing, yeah. yeah. Advancing out of groups. So we've got Trainer Chris and Patriots. Trainer Chris running uh, a giant poison <clears throat> deck. We've, we've seen, you know, we, we mentioned Clyde was one of the big creators of this uh, archetype. Anything stand out to you about this list right here? Uh, giant poison, Patriots running a, a minor deck without kind of the furnace. He, he's got the fire spirit card. Yeah. But it, it seems, so this was something super interesting, I think, about Inner Lull too. I believe it was Inner Lull. He had just a very, 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 very vanilla deck. There was just not anything super notable about it. Yeah. And he was winning games just by playing good Clash Royale, kind of hearkening back to the the foundation, the, the Jason the Giant, yeah. you know, play style. Tanky stuff up front, big damage stuff yeah. in the back. Yeah, and just nothing, nothing tricky, nothing really, uh, and I wouldn't even say gimmicky, but nothing like very overly strong in one way or another. He's just playing your Elixir game. He's just playing the lines of play. And, and 
he's trying to rely on that to win. And I think that's super interesting that I feel like now, you know, with Interlull and with Patriots, they're starting to, the, the, this playstyle is starting to pop up. And I think this is, this could turn into something that is going to be considered the balanced playstyle. Okay. So that. interesting, interesting to see. I, I wonder if it could happen. It, it would be very interesting to me if it, if it did happen. But I like that. And I, I want to be. I think the key things here is that Patriots is going to really surprise trainer Chris with this Inferno Tower, yep. and it'll come down to whether or not Chris can set up a push with guards or barbs in front. Mm -hmm of the giant in order to get yeah. around those Inferno Towers. Because as long as the Inferno Tower is up and fighting, there's really no hope for that yeah. giant to hit the tower. Yeah. yeah, it really, really hampers your ability to do big body pushes. Oh, what arena is this? Bone Pit, sir! Bone Pit. Arena 2! <laughs> where you unlock skeletons <laughs> and you... tombstone, right? <laughs> what about guards? Giant skeleton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Giant guards, skeleton. guards are up in Arena 7, buddy. Oh, They're guarding no. the princess. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's... That's scary. Isn't the princess scared of that? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, let's see, Big Papa Mini Pekka over there. We've seen Mini Pekka just chop towers down without yeah. without regard for human life. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see, I think the big thing- Oh no! Oh, here it comes! Actually, that's not where Patriots oh, wants his Mini Pekka to be. Yep. We've already got that setup we were talking about. We got the guards in front of the giant. Unfortunately, yep. they're moving a little too fast. This uh, Inferno Tower might still hit the giant. Yep. It's yep. in the hand, it's hovered. There it is. And he has no zaps. Zzz. Okay, well now Trainer Chris has the information. We were talking about how it would be a surprise. No surprise. We also like the informational push there. Notice he didn't back that push up with anything. Mm -hmm. He just sort of wanted to see what would happen. Oh, you know what something else reminds me of Chester that he consistently did? He would consistently play miners on the inside of the map and mm -hmm. then and then players started letting it hit the King Tower, and I think it happened like three or four times. Oh, was he playing it down in the, like, yeah. the corners towards <laughs> yeah, the King Tower? Yeah, like three or four times he activated the King Tower. And the worst part was he was playing a Hog Rider deck. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Or Hog Riders like, run up getting shot from yeah. all sides. He still won matches, though, because the Goblin Barrel was so good. I'm, I'm just... I'm sorry, so, yeah, it's not relevant another, to the match. But. Interesting, interesting push here, because this is nine elixir from Trainer Chris. You normally don't see big players dropping just, like, a giant and a support card at the river, right? There's yeah. usually... That's usually ill-advised because there's ways to counter it. But here we're seeing Trainer Chris go for it, and uh, he got a little damage out of it. But I don't know if that was an elixir... I mean, it looks like he lost an elixir, maybe. He fell behind by one or two. Mm -hmm. Maybe worth it, though. Mm -hmm. So far, nothing too committal. A little more damage on Patriot's right side tower. Ooh, a little bad timing there where the Elixir Collector came out yeah. just before the Miner. Now yeah. that Princess is going to get killed here in the middle. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, even though that Elixir Collector is safe, there was no real good answer to the Miner played on the left side. And yeah. so Trainer Chris essentially paid that tower health for, to trade for that yeah. Elixir. Yeah. And even the next one, it's <clears throat> the hell. Oh, no! Oh, Trainer no. Chris did not want that to happen, okay. I'm sure. Full, of, <laughs> full aggressive. We're going for it, yeah. He has Zap this time. Oh, that fireball hurts. That fireball hurts a lot. I think, oh. He almost doesn't want to zap anymore. Wow, so Patriots is taking the lead there. Great uh, early cycle, 32 left in the game. Patriots is a little trash talky, calling the early good game. Oh, no. Oh, no, Arrogance Patriots. is the death of many. <laughs> uh, but but, but Patriots I think is he right. has it he, in the bag. He, yeah. does, he does know that that Inferno Tower has got people by uh, the... He's got another one! I wish Trainer Chris would have tried at least one push with the giant behind the King Tower yeah. to then supplement it later. It seems like he set himself up in a bad position by keep trying to placing it... To keep placing it at the river like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very difficult situation, and... Man, it really hurts when back-to-back -back miners go unanswered. It, yeah. It isn't a ton of damage from the miner alone, but it really, really puts you off kilter and puts you off balance. Trainer Chris had to make a decision. Does he push all in, or does he does he handle the miner in an inefficient way? And I would say the mental game forced him to make make yeah. probably the less effective decision there was in hindsight. There a few but. unfortunate kind of key battles there where... Uh, like, for example, Miner came in, he dropped barbs to intercept the Miner, and the Miner just popped up a little too soon and went after the Elixir Collector anyways, so, like, the mm -hmm. barbs didn't... It wasn't worth the cost, right? Yeah. You spend five for three and you don't even save the Collector. Like, that's kind of yeah. a bummer. Yeah, and, and that Musketeer abandoning your job. Yeah. That I really I think we've sucks. got one more battle here out of, uh, out of Group B, and then we'll jump to Group C. Cool. For some more battles, so let's go to this last match preview. Uh, match preview of Group B. Triple got, legendary. Now, Gray is another player, by the way, who uh, I believe came from the StarCraft II scene. I'm, oh yeah. Uh, I think I could be. I could be wrong about that, but I do know that Gray is a is a you know. It's not just Gray. It's like Gray Hearthstone or Gray SC huh. or something like that. Interesting. Um, 
Carl, also a new face. We've got the Minor Furnace deck here over on the right. Gray running the, uh, I guess it's the Pompeo Triple Legendary deck. So there's been a lot of versions out there. Clark Kent was one of the original innovators of the Triple Legendary deck. Uh, Pompeo made a big strategy post on Reddit and also made some, you know, mm -hmm. played in tournaments, then got first place in a, an, an 800 or 1,000 player tournament with this exact list. Uh, it's very interesting because we, we've seen how tough Inferno Tower is to play around. And with all the other cheap cards like uh, Zap, Goblins, Fire Spirits, etc. E any cheap cards that you put in front of your tank to try to get around the Inferno Tower gets, gets removed very quickly. Mm -hmm. So the whole, a lot of the defensive strategy is centered around that Inferno Tower. And then, of course, the offense is the mini P.E.K.K.A. Minor we're so familiar with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's see. Let's see how th these two decks will interact. Who comes out on top? Carl vs. Gray, two newer faces to the Super Magical Cup. Absolutely. So let's get... Oh, well, we got to put Mini P.E.K.K.A. up top. Like, this card hasn't just destroyed everything yeah. all day. Look at that damage. Whew! Look at that. It does... It two hits itself. <laughs> Have you ever seen Mini yeah. P.E.K.K.A.'s uh, meet in the open field? They both, they auto-kill each other at the same time on the second shot. Yep. And that's why a card like Ooh. Ice Wizard is super important. That's huge defense right there, though, the mini P.E.K.K.A. blocking the Miner. Yeah. If you stifle even just one or two Miner pushes... You save a lot of Fire Spirits. Absolutely. Fire Spirits' lives matter. I think a key card, actually, more than the Miner for Gray, is actually going to be playing and defending the Princesses. Because the Princess is going to be able to chip away at these Furnaces. A single Princess in the lane stops any Fire Spirits from reaching you, and because the Fire Spirits come out regularly, it keeps the Princess on his side of the board. He never really yeah. walks up to the river. He's constantly sitting back. Yep, here we go. You can just see, oh wow, see he's got to use the, the poison, poison right there to take him out. Yep. A one elixir differential, if you pay one elixir for about 200 so damage. I think that's worth it. Yeah, yeah. The question is, did you need that poison for something else? Right, and the nice thing about fighting the minor furnace decks is they don't- Oh, oh one, no! goblin! one goblin is deadly! Uh, even just- oh. <laughs> Uh, without, with, with, there's only one building, right? There's, yeah. there's furnace. There's not like collector and furnace. So only yeah. having to use your poison on the furnaces is pretty valuable. Wow, look at that! Nice. The mini package just fell just a little short. That there, this is the pristine four-three placement that yeah. Yarn likes to talk about. And we even talk about. Uh, so we're, we're going to see this furnace here. The thing is, this elixir collector or this inferno tower with its forty-second lifespan is really going to stop a lot of these things from getting there. Yeah. Yeah, save a lot of health on your tower. Ooh! Is that princess gonna go down? No, she's not! The ice wizard tanked it! Nice. Great place. Oh, you can see uh, that you gotta come down with the he poison. He could have gotten the Inferno Tower there too, but I guess it's not. But too think about that. The deal. furnace has wasted a few cycles already, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get around a, a building that was already paid for. It already earned its elixir yeah. cost. Man, guards are so good against Mini Pekka. Oh, yeah. And there's that princess. So does he have another poison? No, he's gotta play a musketeer to support it. Nice. Uh, he's interesting. He's playing his <laughs> Furnaces farther and farther up. He could literally just play like a Ice Wizard or a Oh, Furnace that's why you, you yep. got... I think he might have clicked that before the old one went away. Like, oh, if he had I waited another it second, it, it would have the template would have laid down a little better. That's... Wow. These mini packets just aren't going anywhere in the field of what guards and, and minions and stuff. Yeah. Hey, big shout out to all these level 3 guards we're seeing too, by yeah. the way. like yeah. You do not have to have your cards exactly at tournament cap for them to be effective. Yeah. I mean, the shields are shields, right? Part of the reason why they're super effective is that despite no matter how much health is left sure. on those shields, they still block all of it. Ooh. Those fire spirits came down and helped clear out some of the defense. Even though the guards are, are uh, keeping the mini P.E.K.K.A. occupied, oh, that no, miner no, did no, a good no, amount of damage. Princess. Oh, he does man. the ice wizard. Oh wow! Get maybe. Oh, and the mini packer rocks. Wow! I don't oh. really like that play by Gray. I feel like he just fell really far behind with a lot of that. Ooh! Yeah. Oh, good use of the fire spirits. Yeah, fire spirits. Even the one more fire spirit coming in. Oh! Yeah. Man, and one of the biggest things about fire spirits is they're so so good against minions. Any kind of minions. Yeah. Any kind of minions, fire spirits are so effective. I mean, a, f a two for five is not something you find very often in the game. It's just one of those, yeah, I mean, Fire Spirits and, and Goblins as well did a lot of work in that game just because if I do, like, minor Goblins, you need two separate, uh, like, cards to stop the uh, taking a second from amount of damage. Well, how do you have two cards for five Elixir or less in yeah. your hand at all times, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into Group C and see if we can't... Uh, <coughs> Get some so, more matches going on here. So far, so far, I'm feeling a little forlorn. 
rum ham because okay. we haven't seen a sparky yet. And I just my my goal currently at the Super Magical Cup ever ever since Sparky was released is to see great success with that card. It was very close last week, but this week we haven't seen any of it. Yeah, it's it's a fun card. I actually think the card's like perfectly fine because it's a terror to in, in like the lower trophy levels. Like it's one of those cards that really teaches you, hey, if you misplay against this card, you're gonna you're gonna hurt really bad. But if you come up with a really good game plan and you execute it perfectly, you won't take damage. Mm -hmm. I I don't think that every card needs to be a tournament terror. I think Sparky does enough work in like easy to medium level like low to medium skill level environments. I think the really th the thing that hurts Sparky is that you just have the best players in the world. So a card like that that's expensive and fragile, there's only so much you can do to prevent good players from playing around it. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Get right into a good game right here. Oh, we got some cool guards in this one. So we're now in group three, or group C, and we've got Clyde, invitational winner, regular uh, regular big timer, uh -huh. against Vizard, who is another uh, former top eight player, regular in the time, top 16, top 32 rounds. Uh, we've got Lava Hound against a giant poison deck. Lava Hound Miner is always kind of, mm. it's the pseudo double Lava Hound effect for very cheap. It's the it's the Lava Hound oh. dies and the tower tags onto the miner You're and right. then the pups do damage. I like that combination a lot actually. So that's yeah. a very interesting combination. You're right yeah. with the Lava Hound. So if if you're tuning at home and this may be the first time you've seen Lava Hound, you don't play it against a lot. When Lava Hound dies, there's a split second where the pups don't exist yet, and the tower automatically retargets to the Whatever nearest is currently thing. Yeah. If nothing's nearby, then it'll just the pups spawn. It locks on a pup and yeah. then it starts shooting them down. But if you have anything else there to lock on, so with the miner being right next to the tower, mm -hmm. it focuses on the miner. All those pups are effectively like a free minion horde yep. that can do a lot of work. So and where this gets to be really, really problematic, and, and we can hop into the game, where this gets to be really problematic, for example, is if you're at that point where we saw double golems, mm -hmm. double lava hounds, when one lava hound dies, yes. the pups pop, but the tower tags onto the second lava hound, and then the pups start doing a ton of damage. And that's where it really, really, really starts hurting. Yeah, so let's see. I think the big uh, one of the big interactions in this game is going to be whether or not Vizard can defend against the Lava Hound. Lava yeah. Hound doesn't have that much hit points. I mean, it it's got a lot, but it's got less than a giant, for yeah. example, for the two less elixir. The big thing is that it's flying. Yeah, it's it flies, but it also moves very very slow. Yeah. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Ah, uh, the ice spirit. Uh. You can see only forty five damage to a tower. You can just let it hit on your tower, and it's not going to yeah. do much. Oh, I like this here though. Using the splash damage of the princess to not only hit the elixir collector, but to kill Vizard's princess and yep. stay alive. Yep. I mean, let's do nice. a quick comparison here. When you see uh, against compared to some of the other tanks in the game, Lava Hound is, you know, for Five two elixir eight. less, significantly less hit points yep. uh, than than the giant. And they move, they probably move at about the same speed. I can't really imagine mm -hmm. if they wouldn't. And the uh, damage is significantly less. Yeah. And it's one of those things, but if you, yeah, significant, that, that's a huge difference. I mean, a giant yeah. punching on your tower will knock it down pretty quickly. If a half health giant re reaches your tower, you're in trouble. But if, yeah. a half, if a half health lava hound hits there and you have an answer for the pups, it may not be that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. The, so big, the big key interaction is the pups. So let's, let's see. see. We got the musketeer down. I like that he's using the giant to guard the musketeer. Yeah. Anything that he plays is going to get tied up on the giant, allowing the musketeer oh, nice. to get a clean one-on-one -on -one shot here. And here comes the miner, and this is kind of what we were talking about. The miner's yeah. going to lose a bit of health first. Okay, nice. And the guards are... So... Well, look at that. The lava hound's tanking for this musketeer. Oh, it goes down. And the pups do a good job handling the uh, the musketeer, but ultimately not really the lava hound push you want to see. Every time you yeah. commit to a lava hound, you want to make sure it gets to the tower and does a good amount of damage because you only have a li limited number of tries. You can only lava hound maybe two, three times yeah. a game. Yeah. Now I I think that what we saw there was perfect defense by Vizard, where he used the musketeer and the princess to shoot the attackers and used the giant mostly just a wall to mm -hmm. guard his musketeer. Because if the musketeer goes down, you're in real big trouble. Mm -hmm. But by using that just to buy time, five elixir to buy mm -hmm. time, it allows the princess and the musketeer to clean up a lot of uh, what the what offense he was bringing. Here comes a gambit. Both players played big cards in the back. How Trying much do you want to push. invest into one lane? How much do you want to invest in the other lane? The decisions are going to be right. really, really important. Well, now here we go. We can see how how dangerous this push can be because we've got the miner down there. We've got a pretty f actually I don't know. We've got another musketeer out now. No, oh, no, the mini pack. Nice. It seems like a pretty even trade. The pups are doing a little bit of damage, but. So far, I think Clyde is getting a slight upper hand on each time he, he plays these trades. 
but it's still not a significant damage that you would expect out of a Lava Hound. It's actually, well, the, the Princess stacking is going to be real brutal. I mean, Vizard's yeah. kind of finding himself. Clyde has an Elixir advantage right now and had to, you know, and still has a Princess out, which, like a Collector, I think is, is, okay. is extra. I actually like this Lava Hound at the bridge because the key thing here is he wants to he wants to delay playing sure. the Miner as long as possible so the counters are the Elixir that Vizard spends. And being able to kill that Princess for free effectively was a nice. great trade. Oh! Play the Miner now. And he does, and I really, really wow. like this play. I don't, I, really I don't like him good. playing it so close to the mini P.E.K.K.A., yeah. but like whatever. So yeah, locks on. Look at that. Those yep. pups can just go crazy and yep. tear that whole tower down. Double, Double princess. princess, knock it down. Clyde, excellent deck. I really like that deck. I would try yeah. that when I get home. Yeah, I, I yeah. yeah, I would try the the Lava Hound Miner combo. That seems yeah. really fun. I think I think he he got his line line of play exactly right at the end there. You want to convince your opponent to play all your elixir before you throw out that miner, right before that Lava Hound dies. Mm -hmm. Then you throw out that miner, and then he's like, oh god, I can't use the guards to quickly DPS down the the miner. And then now the miner is protecting all the pups, and the pups are going to town. Yeah, that's absolutely one of uh, Clyde's biggest strengths as a player is identifying what you're going to do, learn from it, and then build another line of play later mm -hmm. in the game that punishes you. We've seen Clyde as somebody who uh, we've just always seen do really, really, really well mm -hmm. in uh, in longer formats, the bracketed formats, more so than maybe like the ladder format. Mm -hmm. I think we have our top eight. Are you ready to jump into uh, the top eight? We're about ready. Yeah. We could, yeah. Let's watch a few more games here. Let's, let's actually, watch, here it is. Let's watch Godly Love. Yeah, so Godly Love here actually uh, has made the top eight. So let's watch one of these games and see how he got there. All right, we've got Giant Poison and the Ice Wizard to assist. So that's a fairly standard Giant Poison deck against Godly Love's fairly standard Furnace Miner Poison deck. Do you so, know off the top of your head who wins this matchup? Because I don't know if I actually... I mean, like, no, I mean so not, not who wins between these two, but, like, who's favored in this matchup? Like, does the giant poison deck do well against furnace decks, or...? or... Yeah, you know, that's actually an interesting... I'd, I'd probably have to think about that a little while. I feel like they're so kind of... It, at least within the current meta, they're so kind of middle ground-ish mm -hmm. that, that it's hard to call. You know, Giant Poison, I think, is is a very kind of neutral... It's 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 a big body push for sure, yeah. but it's not a golem. It's not a Lava yeah. Hound. It's not a big commitment. So I, I think the key of this match, when I put the cards up there, and I'm glad to see it play out right away, is if Grizzly can play and defend those Elixir Collectors, then we're in... I think he's in pretty good shape in terms of... Um, uh, building up, you know, multiple collectors, getting a big push together and overwhelming it. The Minor Furnace deck is not great at defense, mm -hmm. right? It's good, but it can't handle, like, these 15, 20 elixir super pushes, right? Yeah. So if Grizzly can just get his collectors out and solidly defend them and not fall behind with any too bad of elixir trades, mm -hmm. I think that'll be the, the key to the match. Producing seven elixir for the cost of five is pretty huge. Ooh, look at that, though. I like that def Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Wow. Use the zap to force it to retarget yeah. and got both the yeah. cards to stay alive. But the big part of that for Grizzly was the giant made it to the tower. Yeah. Ooh, oh, no, a little no, late no, on no, the no, minor. No, no, no. Oh, wow. What killed that? Was the tower tagged on the tower tagged onto the mini P.E.K.K.A. before Man. the miner popped up. That, that could that have, been, have been an executional error. Yeah, that right? could have been If the miner was earlier. Huge. If the miner was earlier, then that could have been a very, so very good here comes Grizzly's play. hovering. Both of them are actually hovering. And it, there's actually no miner in Godly Love's hand. So this would be a good time for Grizzly to get it out. But ops to not... I guess he played it down there, he played it in the safe spot. Yeah. You've, we're seeing a lot of people play either their collectors in the middle against Miner mm -hmm. or in this bottom row here, and they yeah. play it inside because yeah. there's only a few safe spots for the yeah. Miner without turning yeah. onto the King there's, Tower. There's two kind of smart spots to put. So there's still an ad additional mind game that Chester very well educated us on yeah. in the last week, is that if you play a unit, but uh, you play your Miner in the risky position, after the Elixir Collector is down, the Miner will go to the unit, and you won't hit the King Tower. Ooh those guards the guards surrounding the musketeer oh, make no, it a lot this, this harder is, yeah this is a pretty big push and the musketeer tags on there's a good zap and the guards are going to clean it up along with the poison wow oh no and the fire, and the fire oh! spirits i mean it doesn't kill him but that's going to stop that musketeer from yeah. being a significant counterattack threat yep this is a really really precarious situation for grizzly right now he had to defend a big push but the more Godly Love tries to shove Elixir down this bridge, the more Grizzly kind of takes steps back into the game. Yeah, it, it costs Elixir to attack in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, the towers generate free offense. Oh, that giant just pushed that miner into yeah, the poison. Yeah, get off. I don't think the Furnace was a good play against the giant, because the giant can absorb so many of those pushes and yeah. still punch down the Furnace. I don't know if that's really the card you want to be playing. Okay, there's going to be Mini P.E.K.K.A. against the Musketeer, but there's a Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the back to protect. 
Oh, and the second... It's the second one. one. Let's see if that's the case. Oh, no, it survives. So the, oh, the red mini pack no. is going to kill that giant pretty badly. Yeah. Well, well the poison helps stifle the counter push, but... But this is dangerous now. Yeah. And Grizzly does not have a lot of elixir. And Grizzly's abandoned the collector plan. Notice that. Like, that's yeah. exactly what these minor decks want you to do, is to get kind of hectic and caught up yeah. and abandon your collector plan. Yeah. And was able to put it away. Uh, great work there by Godly Love to grind it out. Um... You know, I think he did a great job at undermining the collector plan and keeping him off of these, you know, huge, huge push ideas. Yeah, yeah. And, and man, so interesting. I think Grizzly, I almost feel like it was in his incentive to zap the mini P.E.K.K.A. in his double giant push just to make sure that his, his supporting units survived because really he didn't have the card cycle to add on units on top of that. Sure. And so ensuring that his support stays alive to, to do damage while the giant pushes pushes through would would have been really really important for him it's just sm it's super magical cup that's right super magical cup we got the final rounds Now, what are we doing because, oh, again, so this is a good reminder. If you'd like to join the Super Magical Cup Tournament Series, the first couple invitational weeks are not the full 128-person size because we've only qualified about 150 people. Not everyone signs up each week. So if you'd like to join, go to supermagicalcup.com, scroll, scroll down to the Sign Up button. Make sure to sign up and receive the emails so you can play in the qualifiers throughout the week. The top players of the qualifiers earn qualifier points, and you only need like any points basically to sign up. Although we're gonna favor the you know the, the more points, more more point people. But since we're not filling up the full 128 right now, any points gets you in. Yeah. So play in any of these qualifiers, do well, get in, uh, and I believe we can start the top eight pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think we will. So let's let's take a look at. I think we're actually... All right, matches may begin yeah. now. Awesome. Cool. I, I, I'm really interested to see who moved on, and if... for I see a few people talking about it, but... Yeah, let's take a look. Actually, here, we can, we can pull up the... Oh, uh, he did. Cool. Yeah. So, we've got CMC Hugh, a yeah. member of Elite Gaming. Actually, let's pull it up. Member of... Oh, he's not, he's, well, he's not in Elite Gaming yeah. right now, obviously. <laughs> but he's uh, a member of Elite Gaming. Very, very, very powerful oh in tournaments. Look at that. 67,000 cards. And over 1,000 tournament matches played already. He Keep lives. in mind. Yeah. He lives so for CMC tournaments. Hugh is, uh, is a no-jokester. Godly Love, who got here. Uh, see, high trophies of almost 4,000. 22,000 cards. Yeah. Lost. I mean, no one in the Super Magical Cup is a chump in tournaments, right? We know that yeah. much. 22Ks are significantly higher than I've ever earned. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Gorsh. Santi. 2.7K. That's yeah. a little more down to earth. <laughs> yeah, that's a little more, little more relatable. <laughs> Relatively new player, too. 1,000 wins in lifetime. Yeah. 3,600. Well. Trainer Chris and Nick. Oh, yeah. Trainer Chris and Trainer Nick. Yep. 46,000. 46, yeah. yeah, no kidding. High of 4,000. 5,000 more, also around 4,000. A lot of minor decks in the top so far. Yeah. Gray, yeah. who we looked at as well, 3,400. Mm -hmm. These are all very respectable amounts. Almost, notice that even the free-to-play players, no one is really below like 3,500 yeah. high trophies. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh. Clyde Ooh. just getting determined cap. I hope, oh. I hope Clyde plays this in the, the top rounds. I love Double Prince. Double Prince is the game that is, is the yeah. one that I have and, been making it in. And, and the big thing to know about Double Prince this time around is they've kind of detached themselves from the P.E.K.K.A. So the Double Prince oh, is Oh, that's not, a good point. Yeah. I did like, I like the version with the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the two Princes, but there's definitely times where you feel like you get stifled. Like you have a little too much redundancy, and if they can counter a Prince, they can usually yeah. counter multiple Princes. Yeah. But yeah. it'll be cool to see how that goes. I like the Ice Spirit use in that deck. That'll be really cool. So I think we're going to live spectate the first game, and then we'll start mm -hmm. watching the, the replays. You know, just as a side note while we're waiting here, I'm also very, very interested. One of the things that we said when we first saw the cards from him was mm -hmm. that the Lumberjack was kind of a pseudo mini P.E.K.K.A. And mini P.E.K.K.A. being so important in the meta yeah. these days, I'm really curious why people haven't adopted the Lumberjack a little more. There's a little bit of... I don't have it, right? Like, I think even players who have spent a lot of money and have been really involved in the game may not necessarily have the card. But I do think that, you know, if it was good, we would have seen more of it by now. I think the two things that kill it is that uh, 
Mini Pekka is a very binary card. It's kind of like Balloon. It either gets there or it doesn't, and there's not a lot of gradient between there, right? Like, mm -hmm. Hog Rider has this thing where sometimes it falls short, sometimes it gets one hit, two hit, three hits. Like, there's a lot of different hog pushes out there. Balloon is like, it either dies or it kills the kit tower, yeah. right? It's like very, yeah. there's very little between. And I feel like Lumber, because Mini Pekka is like that kind of card, to have less hit points than Mini Pekka tilts that coin flip far over to the lost side. It almost never reaches. Mm -hmm. Now that's okay because it drops a rage, but then if you don't use the rage, mm -hmm. then you should have just been playing mini P.E.K.K.A. And on top of that, the damage is um, much lower, right? Like it actually has about 30% or 40% less damage than mm -hmm. a mini P.E.K.K.A. So even if it does connect, it's not as... So the question is, right, for example, Lumberjack is for Elixir. Right? Sure. And the mini P.E.K.K.A. is similar for, for Elixir. People will happily play the mini P.E.K.K.A. And, and feel content with them stopping a minor cold just with that card. Yeah. If you were to play the Lumberjack and stop the minor cold with that card, how many times do you really expect the Mini Pekka to go across the bridge and actually do some damage? Sure. Right? Players will respond to the Mini Pekka by playing a, a cheap card, and so is it just that players will respond to the Lumberjack by not playing any cards? I mean, I, because yeah, eventually I people saying. are going to have to play cards anyways, right? Yeah. And so the, it's not like the Lumberjack is getting less damage than the Mini P.E.K.K.A. In both cases, they're both be causing the opponent to spend Elixir, right? Yeah, that's a good question. And then also the other part of that is very, very few times will somebody just let that Mini P.E.K.K.A. walk across the bridge alone after defending the Miner. So you're going to be playing units with it anyways. Oh, man, we were waiting on a match to start to spectate, and then suddenly it just, like, already was a minute into the game. That's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll let these matches finish up. So we got another minute, and we'll start watching the replay so we can do the match previews and see what yeah. all the decks are. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I think one thing to touch on this that we that could improve Lumberjack is that... So Mini P.E.K.K.A. has a two-second... Actually, let's go take a look at it while we're just waiting for these... We're waiting for these games to wrap up. Let's go take a look at the actual card levels here. Uh, Mini P.E.K.K.A. <laughs> here it is. So Mini P.E.K.K.A. has a 2 second or a 1.8 attack speed. Yeah. Okay? But Lumberjack has a 1.1 attack speed. So even oh. though it's faster, like the DPS is lower, but the, it's at a faster attack speed, so yeah. maybe it's a little more flexible. I could see if they wanted to both up the damage and make Lumberjack even that much less weak. I guess mm -hmm. to quick attacking cards, is you could lower its hit speed to something like 0.8 or 0.75 or mm -hmm. something like that, where even if the DPS was similar or a little higher than it currently is, the important thing is that I couldn't just drop like skeletons, goblins, spear goblins, the same sort of stuff that you use to counter mini P.E.K.K.A. Mm -hmm. wouldn't work on Lumberjack because he's just like whack, whack, whack and keeps yeah. moving, right? Huh. I think that would be a good way to separate those two cards and make them mechanically distinct while being mm -hmm. sort of similar hit mm -hmm. points wise. Because I think the big problem is that if, you know, if, if Mini P.E.K.K.A. is the only card that gets easily beat up and distracted in your entire deck, then it never gets through yeah. ever. But yeah. if you could put it along with a lot of, a lot of other swarmy, fast attacking units, mm -hmm. it would just be different. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's kind of one of the, the those things where you're always thinking about I'm always thinking about, okay, people will play, like, Double Prince Minor. People will play Double Prince X, right? What happens when you play Double Prince Lumberjack, right? Sure. The idea of, like, well, the whole thing about the Double Prince is that people play chump cards, the Dark Prince goes in and charges the chump cards, and then the princes continue on their way to attack the tower. Mm -hmm. Add in the fact that Rage interacts really well with charge, and, and kind of the speed mechanics at, interact very dramatically with the prince's charges, right? So, like... I feel like the Lumberjack is a very natural kind of addition to that, right? You play the Lumberjack on defense, and then you, as the Lumberjack moves across the bridge, you play your Double Princes, and then you just let your opponent try to stop the, yeah. the splash damage, you know? And, and the then, minions behind it. Are the, yeah. yeah, it's almost like a minor deck in that regard. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into the top eight. Well, really, the top six, we had three clans going yeah. here. So we have a top yeah. six this week. Uh, so again, sign up at Super Magical Cup, play in the qualifiers, you could be here next week, and don't worry about the In Construction Studio, because in about a month we're going to have the coolest set, we've already seen it, you cannot believe how cool yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. You're really going to want to be a part of Super Magical Cup, so sign up, let's get into the top six. Rainy, we got Godly Love versus Trainer Chris. We have uh, a relatively new name on the scene, Godly Love, against one of the most accomplished tournament players in the game right now, Trainer Chris. What do you yeah. see in these two decks? So, minor deck with the Inferno Tower, I mean, this is kind of... I feel like Trainer Chris is building a deck that is just very, very uh, vanilla, 
uh, again, right? Like, uh, he has two of the three legendaries, but it's not a triple legendary deck. He's kind of got the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the guards. And he's using, sort of like, looks like Pompeo's deck, but not really. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, I, I think he's just leaning on playing better mm -hmm. than his opponent to defeat him. There's not really a particular edge, but there's not really a particular weakness to his deck either. I, I think this game is going to come down to miners and poisons, because I don't see how either deck is going to significantly make, like, mini P.E.K.K.A. or, like, mini P.E.K.K.A. progress on each other. I don't see how these musketeers and mini P.E.K.K.A.s and princesses do significant amounts of yeah. damage with all of the poisons, fireballs, towers, etc. on yeah. each side. Yeah. So we'll see how this game comes down, but I, I, my estimate is that this might be a grinder, buddy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And and I'm really interested to see how Crater Triss makes this, or Crater Triss. Crater, yeah. <laughs> Crater Chris makes this deck work. So here we go, right away. I think actually what might be key for Godly Love is actually that Musketeer. Because the Musketeer can shoot down princesses, mm -hmm. it can... Uh, work not just on defense, but it's a very powerful offensive card. Yeah. I mean, we've an unanswered musketeer does a ton of oh, damage. Was that the point? Oh, I see. He kind of. I think he wanted. Oh, he's trying to make a read. He's trying to make a read there. That was yeah. a little bit of poker we saw. Yeah, but I think it was a good bet that was kind of hedged. Well, I don't know if that's that's the right term because yeah. the furnace was there. He was going to get the fireball on both the furnace. Right. I think it was. I think that was exactly it. Right. He's yeah. thinking like, well, I'll at least fireball the furnace, which might be something that I'm interested in doing. And there's a decent upside that I get like anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting, but Godly Love takes all that damage and chooses to play a collector. Ooh, I like Trainer Chris trying to go on the inside there, yeah, trying to yeah, he's trying to make the think read. it. He's trying to make Keep the in read. mind, guys, uh, one thing that I've actually, I've noticed is, you know, obviously a lot of Miner in the environment right now. Yeah. Miner is getting nerfed in the next balance update. Supercell oh, confirmed the deploy, time. the deploy time was an accident. So right now, Miner has a deploy time of 0.7 seconds instead of one second. Every card in the game is a one second deploy time, yeah. unless it's like a expo or something mm -hmm. that minor accidentally is 0.7 it was just uh you know keyboard fat finger something like that oh, yeah. so it will be replaced uh, up back up to one second and i'll i think that we're going to see a lot less minor maybe not a lot less but minor will be easily countered so you'll see more yeah. variety yeah. i guess in the i mean defense. in this situation the minor would attack onto the guards instead of the collector yeah that's, absolutely that's the difference yeah i mean a third of a second's huge right yeah yeah all right so far it's going just as planned rumham both players Fireballs are and, yeah. slapping each other with wet noodles. <laughs> I, you know, big shout out though to how well the furnace is. And the furnace has chipped through a little bit of damage here and there. Yeah. yeah. Look at that musketeer that we talked about. That yeah. musket. I mean, that's like three, three shots. Three shots is over five hundred damage, right? That's yep. significant. Yeah. Interesting. So this time, Trainer Chris did the same move. Instead of using fireball, he used that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's gonna like. I'm just gonna, you know. I'm going to try it again, but do a lower risk, lower commitment. Notice, do you see this little buggy thing happening with the tower there? On the inf on the uh, fire spirits against the inferno tower, one of the tower is shooting at a fire spirit, but it's like not connecting. Like it's like, it's like shooting yeah. at the first fire spirit, it's dying, and then the arrow just like hits the ground. Yeah. Yeah, so this that's is weird. That's allowed the inferno tower to actually take hits from the fire spirits of the furnace. Yeah. And, and man, you know, Trader Chris actually with his consistent miner on the tower and not the furnace has actually chewed through quite a lot of health on that, on that I mean, tower. At some point, you gotta actually punch someone through, and if you're eating poisons and fireballs all game, like, you're gonna have to start minoring the tower. Yeah. I think this is a good situation for him to actually be able to miner the furnace oh, in no. the back oh, and no, then no, maybe no, no, still no. hit the tower, but oh no, not against all this. Uh, no. Uh -oh. Not like this. Yeah, this is it, buddy. This yeah, is... there's a lot of cards coming that down. That Musketeer's just shooting, shooting, oh, shooting. Oh, God. Godly, Godly love. love. With the upset over Trainer Chris in game one. He has four-digit cards won in tournaments, but he's still beating, beating people up. Ooh, buddy. All right, well, let's go to match number two. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm interested to see what Trainer Chris's alternate deck is. Here we are. Game two of the match. So Godly Love had to switch. Switches to the Pompeo triple legendary deck. Yep. Trainer Chris uh, opts to stay with the same deck. Okay, interesting. So maybe this is the deck he identifies as, as his stronger deck. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I mean, at least it's the one he's certainly more familiar with, and if he's going down, going down swinging, right? Yeah, yeah. that's always something really interesting to me from him, and I, and I sometimes wonder how, how well the players no, you know, we should like, ask them that. Like, yeah, I'd love to ask them some yeah. of the logic behind. Like, if you just lost with the deck, do you play it again or do you yeah, switch and why? Yeah. And we're back in the bone pit, fella. Oh yes, arena two, the driest of arenas. Oh gosh. Oh nice, great really defense. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I think he made the read. Ooh, oh, I don't like those wow. guards there, but again, or the the guards ate the fire spirit yeah. attack. But yeah. hey, it might not be elixir efficient, but you protected your tower from yeah. taking any damage, which can really add up. Yeah. 
I think so. We got Godly Love. Let's see how the. I mean, honestly, it's gonna come oh, down to how nice. well Godly Love I think plays the minor. That was a good zap. I mean, goblins are a really, really, really good answer to minor. Yes. Aside from the fact that zap takes them down. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ignoring that part, it's a really actually. Oh, and another good defense. Oh the mini Pekka defends against the minor again. And you can see like that collector in the middle, I believe, now has survived two separate minor attacks. Yeah. And that really adds up. Like. Yeah. So you see, we're talking about lumberjack, right? Like, look how much mini Pekka was already not gonna get there. Yeah. Lumberjack dies even sooner. A rage goes down, and you're like, oh, God, yeah. you know, what yeah. do I do? Do I run guards into that just to use the rage? I mean, it seems kind yeah. of bad, right? Yeah. The question is if you can justify playing something alongside that mini Pekka. It's sure. across the bridge, if that's a situation, right? And that comes to elixir management, right? What decisions yeah. you make with your elixir. It also could come down to just more cards, right? Like, we've seen cards in the past that maybe aren't great right when they're released, but shortly after the release, mm -hmm. some other cards come along to supplement it. I could see Lumberjack doing really well with some other card later. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah, exactly what we are talking about. The guards are guarding the princess. Yep, there you go. That's all they do. It's like, we're best <laughs> friends. Oh, nice. And they did a good job. Even though the miner did get through yeah, on the collector. Yeah, but princess does way more damage. Princess does infinite damage, buddy. Yeah. Look at this thing go. Yep. You mad. <laughs> Golly loves yeah. that. That was good. That, that would have been really a good, good time. Yeah, play. of course. Like, and especially Chris, if he wanted to, could have dropped his princess down to shoot Godly Loves Princess and actually keep that pressure yeah. up. And actually is going to opt to do that. Yeah. So here comes the princess down. Now, if you see, Godly Love just got out of that. Just got out of that annoying, like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, out. no. Good guess. And the fireball knocks the mini Pekka back. Oh, uh, just for one more hit. But look at that. splash, maybe? Yeah, it will. Uh, well, uh, one more will shot. No. It does get oh, he gets one more shot. God. Nice. <laughs> All right. Once if again, Mini Pekka do a good job. Trainer Chris is not falling for it this game yeah. as much as he yeah. was last time. I mean, that, yeah. Those those miners got to go. Yeah. <laughs> what I always find so hilarious. And that once again, the, the princess Trainer Chris has really have the princess advantage in this game. Nice, nice, and the fireball done and done. Now just wow. And I think he might even up. hit that. Oh, and they're gonna trade off there too. Oh, good. He's using the extended drop zone to, to yes. make sure threats don't come across the bridge. Uh oh, uh oh, and the Mini Pekka is a little late. Oh no, it's right There's on time. That time. There There's you go. A zap. Oh, nice. Nice. Play it safe. Yep. Very good. You might need that zap later. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's done. It's over. Trader Ooh, Chris does it. Nice. Ties Solid it play. up. One and one. Solid play. And uh, that's what we were talking about, about, like, with a vanilla deck with a balanced play style. It's just all about making the right decisions. Trainer Chris defended those miners very, very handily, protected his elixir collectors. He guarded his princess well and just, like, made sure that every single elixir that he was committing to the board was getting good effectiveness. All yes, right, sir. and here we go. We've got game three of their matchups. Let's do the match preview real quick. Trainer Chris's other deck is the uh, the giant poison deck that we oh, saw okay, earlier yeah, yeah. Uh, against the minor furnace. Again, uh, I think this comes down to how, I mean, we saw Trainer Chris defend his elixir collectors really well yeah. last game. I think yeah. we might be another one of those where if he can get his collectors out, get the big push out, can overcome this furnace deck. I think we saw Godly Love beat someone earlier who managed to not do that very well. They, they went off the, uh, I think it was Grizzly or whatever, went off the collector plan, kind of forgot that. So yeah. let's see if Trainer Chris uh, does it any better. You know something interesting that just popped in my head that, that just thinking about, when you play a goblin barrel, for example, on your tower, the goblins separate. Yes. I wonder if that would be a really good minor defense if you played it on your elixir collector, if you could get them to surround the elixir collector. That's a good point. I wonder if that's a thing. I, again, that's another reason why I think Goblin Barrel is one of the more underrated cards right now is that there's a lot of weird utility things that people haven't quite discovered. If you remember, it took a while for people to realize that you could use skeletons to defend against like Minion Horde yeah. by pulling half the Horde across the <laughs> field. This wasn't, wasn't an obvious interaction, yeah. right? That I could see people trying out more Goblin Barrel stuff as time goes on. I mean, Goblin Barrel is actually great at, like Miner, at attacking Elixir Collector. Yeah. So you can actually Miner and throw Goblin Barrel, not even at the same plot, but like in different sides, yeah. and they have to figure out what they're... What yeah. They're reacting to. Yeah, I love the poison or fireball to go along with the miner because not only do you take the tower down, but look at that; those barbarians are done. Yep, and yeah, this musketeer is gonna. Oh no! Giving ah, up on the job. The tower's okay. got him. Yeah, yep. the, tower, the musketeer didn't even need to be played. To be honest, it yep. was nice. Yep. You're gonna split the split fire spirits. <laughs> I didn't even know that could happen. One was was oh, drifting one, towards the barbarian. The yeah, yep. and then it went away. <laughs> I was like, how does that even happen? Uh, that's a, that's this is a pretty, pretty sizable push, push. Yeah, yeah, even without the elixir collector. Guards comes. against guards, and the princess is in and the back. And the musketeer back. looks like she might be defended. Oh, she does! And so the musketeer Chris gets to again. shoot. Again, I mean, princess guard combination is really, really doing well for Trainer Chris. Yeah. I mean, it takes so many shots. Look at this. Each each thing takes four shots to kill, so they're taking two shots each now, even after the zap. 
Uh oh, miner walking across the map, but there's nothing to help. Good, yeah, the miner itself isn't too threatening. It's only doing 40 damage a shot, or 64 damage a shot, I'm sorry. But that allowed him to play the elixir collector knowing that at the very earliest, it's a full cycle away. Yeah. And do you even want to poison this side now? When the other side is down to 1200 health, the yeah. poisons kind of have to start going towards that side if you want to win in the next you yeah. know, minute and a half or whatever. Yeah. And you're already down on your side. You know, it's yeah. not like you're, you're, you have all the time in the world, just in the sense of your opponent's going to mm -hmm. defeat your tower, so. Once it hits that overtime and you're down one tower, you lose. But this could work for Godly Love here because if Godly Love can just build up a defense against this push, it'll naturally have units in the lane to counter push with. And even low health yeah. oh. musketeers or whatever will be good enough with a miner to take down that tower. Ooh, that princess into the guard seems really strong. Is it enraged? Ah, oh, no! It's not enraged on the front as it walks into the front. Oh, but it it's survives! Okay. It's okay. Oh, The no. princess looked like she was about to walk in and die to the uh, yeah. poison was able to survive yeah. there. Yeah. Ooh, again, not like Oh, actually, good barbarians, and the barbarians dodge the poison pretty much all together. Nice, and another princess outside of the poison radius, and this might this might hurt Godly Love a lot. Ooh, the miner, okay. Oh, pulls back some uh, of that stuff. Oh, no, the guards do not survive in a poison very long. Yep, yep. But and the that, giant makes it, that. Ooh, that's it. I mean, this is the difference we were talking about between giant and lava hound. Yep. Lava hound does not really kill a tower with any real speed, but a giant, if it makes it there, can do significant damage. And of yeah. course, the low, the unzappable guards are helping. Like, yeah. guards yeah. are uh, more than skeletons, less than goblins in terms of their attack, but we know how scary goblins are when they lock onto yeah. your tower. And is there enough time left? Oh, this uh, wasn't enough time for the poison and miner yeah. to take it down. So, godly love, as expected from tournament cards won, he made a good first attempt. Won one match, but was not able to take the series, and Trainer Chris will advance. Trainer Chris advances 2-1 to one after losing, yeah, game one to Godly Love. Hey, congratulations to Godly Love. Come back for uh, the future, future tournaments, for sure. And let's take a look at... What's the next match you want to watch? I kind of want to see CMC Hugh Trainer Nick. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Make sure we got let's the first one first here. Game. Here it is. Yeah. This is the one we were waiting on, and then the, uh... Kind of got bugged out in game. Ooh! Triple Legendary versus Minor Furnace. Kind of been the story of this week's tournament. That's, We've seen a lot of Minor Furnace. That's the lightning. That's the oh, lightning. Oh, whoa! That's the lightning we're talking about. So, okay, Rocket. We saw Woody last week win with Rocket, a relatively uh -huh. underused card because it happens to punish the Elixir Collector meta, a lot of the other meta games. I'm actually really excited to see Lightning because I, I prefer Lightning to Rocket overall. It, does, it doesn't... It does straight up kill an elixir collector but it does six of the seven pumps so like mm -hmm. you can mostly wipe it out but it's so good against these like mini pekka ice wizard musketeer defenses that we see because you can just for six elixir be like okay boop 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 like yeah. wipe out yeah. 10 elixir worth of stuff let's um i hope we see a good lightning hope we see a sick lightning in this game for sure yeah yeah i agree and of course the ice spirit on the other side can't throw that one away Oh, and it's perfect. Oh, wow. We're in the Frozen Arena with the Ice Spirit deck. So CMC Hugh, uh, you know, obviously his minor usage is going to be really important. I am dying to see this lightning and what that's going to do. Early yep. good defense by CMC Hugh. Yep. Uh, oh! oh! Yep. So Furnace, Mini Pekka, Tower. Very reasonable. Yep. I mean, that's... Even if you count the furnace as only like two or three elixir left, that's at least seven elixir wiped off the board, mm -hmm. plus the tower. Yep. Now granted, he played the miner already though. So do you think this is a variation on the like minor fireball tricks that we yeah. used to see where people play minor and then you play barbs and you fireball the whole thing? Yeah. Lightning is maybe a, a more expensive but also much more potent answer to that sort of setup. Oh, here comes the ice spirit. Oh, oh it, it does freezes. freeze. It does. Okay. Ghost guards, go. Nice. Wow, those guards are doing a good job of tearing it down. Look, the miner is relatively like, Forgot to react yeah, to the miner. That, that was basically 500 damage. The miner is gonna does about 500 mm. damage untouched. And here, once again, we see the mini pack of clearing oh, out the, the miner. Guards actually make it. It's actually yeah, doesn't even go. not gonna stop the ice wizard, but pretty good. Yeah. The guards themselves do about 500 damage if they just walk up. I never oh really? That. Yeah. 2k health left on that left side tower. Guards walked up and just stabbed it. They're similar to minions in that regard. Minions mm -hmm. take three shots each to kill, but they're faster. Guards take four shots each to kill. But they're a little uh, bit. Are they slower? They they're, slower? They're, I think, a little... They might be the same speed, but they do less damage. Yeah. So they get up and they have fewer attacks. They get more attacks in, but... It's worth ah! About no! Damage. The princess lives. Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh! There no. we go! Oh! Though. It does a little bit of it damage! It does, it does. Actually, Ice Spirit does about 100 damage at tournament cap, and Princess yeah. only has about 270 oh, health. So if she it. has about 40% health or less, the Ice Spirit finishes her yeah. off. Yeah. Got lightning again. Now we have Zap in CMC's hand, but he's opting not to play it. Very interesting choice. Yeah. He could have zapped them right away, but I think he just didn't think it was overall going to end up doing anything, lead to any sort of value. Mm -hmm. Well, this spawn up two. Oh, he needs the zap there. 
Oh, oh, wow. That was actually a lot of elixir spent by CMC Hue to yeah. prevent what? Like yeah. a, a, one swing on yeah. a furnace? I don't know if I would have And the furnace that would that. die to lightning anyways. Yeah. The princess is going to clean that up. And oh, no, here's a pretty interesting push because we've got uh -oh. a fire spirit still alive. He needs to scramble to find defense. Oh, I like the, the last minute guards, though, to, to distract the mini P.E.K.K.A. Okay, this is going to be really, really interesting because Trainer Nick has the option to assist this pusher with lightning yeah. right now. Nick has done, uh, a, it's funny because even though he's got lightning and really he's been punishing these bigger defenses, he hasn't been able to punch through a lot of damage onto the tower. There, he, he wow. actually does opt to spend it. Here we got the counter. Oh, the locked onto the guards though first. One guard will make it up there and start doing damage. Look at that, I'm at about 80 damage a swing. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty it's reasonable. very similar to that whole minions discussion that we were having. It's, it's much the same. If you have one little cheap unit that does yeah. a good amount of damage just alive, it adds up a lot. And we talked about just playing not to lose at this point. I think CMC Hugh is can win purely on just poison. Whoa, maybe oh. not. But I was going to say just purely on the poison and uh, other things. But here we are in overtime. Yes, that's it. Yep, He's going to take it home. That's it. The lightning, man, the lightning was strong. And the ideal situation was if, if uh, Trainer Nick could have caught the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Musketeer with the lightning. The important thing to know about lightning is it takes the highest health units. Yes, and so actually the guards were a non-factor in that scenario. The lightning, I feel like, would, would have been much better spent on that clump of units just to make sure all you're dealing with is the minor and then the guards. This, this is one you're really going to like. Trainer, Cri Trainer Nick yes! switches to his other deck. So CMC Hugh wins. CMC Hugh must switch decks. Trainer Nick opts to switch decks to his other deck using... Buh? Sparky? And, and log. log. Yes. So here we are. Oh, Trainer Nick, I want you to win some money with log. Yes. I want you to win some money with log and spark. Goblin okay. barrel. Z so let me There's talk about this deck. Three cards that I really like here. So here's what the, the thought of this deck is. The plan for this deck is that it is trying to maximize, or it's trying to punish you for your zaps. It's got Goblin Barrel, it's got Fire Spirits, it's got Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Sparky. All four of those cards are very reasonable to zap. Mm -hmm. If left to its own devices, it builds up the kind of like giant Sparky pushes that are that are pretty powerful, mm -hmm. can overwhelm. But if you ever, if they sense that you're a deck that maybe doesn't have a lot of ways to reset or swarm the Sparky, mm -hmm. it tries to overload you with like Sparky plus Log plus Goblin Barrel kind of all at once and you just don't have enough like zap the interaction between Sparky and Log is very, very good because when we initially talked about Log, I talked about this idea of you don't have to necessarily kill them. You just have to convince them to have to wait. Yeah. And if you wait too long against Sparky, it shoots your tower, right. and that split second is the difference between a, a win point. and a loss. And we've also talked, people have been really upset about Log as a card because they're saying, well, like, Log doesn't replace Zap. And I don't think it's that Log replaces Zap. It's like you got to find a deck that wants to play both, that wants to play two Zaps, mm -hmm. right? And this deck seems like it does. It wants Zap and Log. Well, let's not keep you waiting any longer. I am dying to see this deck. Trainer Nick, CMC Hugh, game two. If Trainer, if CMC Hugh wins, CMC Hugh advances into the top four. Yeah. So this is the life. All of, <laughs> all of uh, Trainer Nick's life is hinging on this Sparky here. You've got that Sparky in there. And of course, let's put big old Sparky up on the yes, board. One the only card in the game that damage. does more damage than its own hit points. <laughs> that one hits itself. <laughs> 1,300, that is ridiculous. And here, he's just starting with it. This whole idea of card cycling. He's just starting with it. Go, he oh, is giant in front. Announcing okay. right away what kind of player he is. Okay, so we got he, giants on both sides, too. He's got log available. Okay, so the there's zap a zap. already restarted, so we got like three. Two, oh, the fire spirits! Wow. This is dangerous. This five, is getting four, really, really dangerous. Three, two. Oh, and he doesn't oh, have zap! He doesn't five, have zap! Five, four. Three, I think that tower's done, two, man. Oh. I think that tower's done. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> I think that tower's done. It's not even a minute. CMC. There's five seconds to two minutes. CMC Hugh doesn't have Zap in the deck. Oh, no, he does have Zap. He, he, he used, he used it, it early. He used it early. So here we go. I don't know if CMC Hugh has a lot of experience against these Zap bait decks. <laughs> oh, my God. And even if you are, what do you do? What yeah. do you decide to Zap? There's so many things you have to Zap, actually. I think, you, I think he's going to want to start poisoning the Sparky and not worry about zapping the Sparky, but starting to put the giant in front of the Sparky, right? Yeah. Like, like plop it in front and just let it take, yeah. like, two shots while everything yeah. else is killing it. The giant can actually be played in the aggressive extended drop zone territory to tank both towers yeah. immediately. Will Trainer Nick opt to do that? He might be incentivized to keep it near the Sparky instead. It looks like they're just going to swing sides. Like, it looks like he's just going to counter push the other side and try to defend 
I, I feel like so zap again was used, but what was the this. point of that zap? Right. So he, so CMC Hugh just zapped the Sparky, but why? Like mm -hmm. that cannon didn't kill the giant, right? It didn't yeah. kill the Sparky. I just feel like that might not be the best time for him to be zapping. Yeah, I think the big thing there for CMC Hugh was he was able to play his Musketeer late. Yes. And and the Musketeer tagged onto the Sparky, whereas right. before he had already committed his Musketeer, and his defense choice was the Mini right. Pekka. But that Mini Pekka got immediately shot down by Fire Spirits and the Mini Pekka of Trainer Nick. So. Right. I mean, it's certainly an improvement, right? Like it's yeah. better, certainly better to not lose a tower than lose yeah. the tower. But I just, yeah. I just feel like. Against a deck that's really going to punish every zap play that you have, like taking a little more, you know, be a little more careful with it. That's interesting use of the log. It push. Oh wow! Look at that. Separated the. Yeah. One mini Pekka swing plus a log kills those sorts of troops too. So I wonder yeah. if that goes. It goes with the mini Pekka, where like if the log hits either an ice wizard or a musketeer, then the mini Pekka just one hits it and takes Here that much. Here comes the damage. big money. Was there the zap is already the played? Money. Yep. Oh, there oh, on no. the other side. So you can see how, how bad it is if you can't, you know. So one of the interactions when we were talking about kind of the popular Royal Giant spot to, to put big bodies to <sighs> aggro both the towers at the same time, that synergizes really well with Goblin Barrel. Oh, good point. You're right, because you can just play Giant in the middle, let both towers attack it, then Goblin Barrel's anywhere it works. That opening Sparky! Wow, 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 wow! So now we go to Game 3. Trainer Nick has to go back to his original deck, and CMC yeah. Hugh stays the deck. The Sparky just comes out of nowhere to... Uh, to get that kill and then goes right back into the deck box. Yeah. So let's see. Um, is game three right here? Yep. 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 So we'll get right into it, yeah, but as so we see the, the giant deck. poison deck against. Okay. Okay. Ooh, very interesting. Okay. Trainer Nick versus CMC Hugh. Let's get right into it. So, so in general, lightning is a little more difficult to justify against big body decks just because yes. the big body will almost always attract the damage and not get killed. And so your supporting units, which in many ways you could argue are the most important part about the big body decks is what you put behind mm -hmm. the giant, uh, may survive. You know, that one extra attraction to the lightning might, may help maybe... Oh. What huh. just got killed? I'm trying Musketeer. to... Musketeer. Musketeer. So that's two elixir to do about 400 damage or so to the tower. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably okay, right? Yeah. So maybe yeah. he's... Just, maybe Trainer Nick is realized he should just be more aggressive with the lightning. Like, cycle the lightning as much as possible yeah. because a lot of these oh, games well, are coming down that's to... That's juicy for lightning right there. Oh, and the, but it's too late, right? Like, yeah. he just cast the lightning, so now he can play what would be... Bad to play. Bad to play against lightning, yeah. right? Card cycling. Oh, no, we didn't hit the, uh, the princess there. The princess. There. The princess is gonna There's go the so other way. There's so many princesses that go left. just... Uh, have and look, it's hitting the collector oh, wow. too now. Wow, that's, yeah, a, that that's hurts. the world's most valuable princess there for Trainer Nick. Yep. Interesting. Trainer Nick was capped on Elixir, so he felt compelled to play a card. He had to play the mini peck in the back. But guards will kind of rectify that situation and still ensure that his line of play is kind of clean. Sure. And it actually does still hit the Ice Wizard, so. Yeah. That's oh my still god, it almost, <laughs> it almost took another swing, yeah. That miner gets a ton of damage. CMC Hugh on now double elixir, but lightning is still on the table. But he smartly plays it away from the low yeah, health tower. Yeah, if if that was actually tilted to the right, lightning could hit both. Yeah, lightning could actually can hit the back corner and then also the a a collector that's in the middle tilted towards your yeah. side. So by tilting it away, he's doing a good job separating it. And I think at this point he might even just not be able to play any more collectors on the left side. Yeah. I have to play them all on the all right. on the bot back corner actually the right corner yeah. because any lightning now is going to be very high value against yep. that left tower. Yep. Oh no, here comes another. Yeah, you can see from the little highlight, the little stat things, those Inferno Towers are hard counters yep. to Giants. They both cost five, except the Inferno Tower kills those things without taking pretty much any damage. Yeah, nice defense with the Mini Pekka against the Miner there. And oh, CMC Hugh yeah. needs to be very, very, very careful that that tower does not get chipped any lower. Yeah. Because Inferno Tower goes down, I think, before. Yeah, perfect timing there, yeah. so let's get through. Yeah. The scary thing when you start including Lightning and Rocket into decks is that. Technically, you need to be very careful. Like 923 health is already in very critical territory yeah. against lightning. And he already did. Like, so he li he just lightning. Yeah. He played a collector. Like the in the fact that this immediately wizard, lightning. The fact that this ice wizard is doing this right now. Okay, well he's basically lost the game here. You think so? Oh, because now it's in the, within one lightning yep. range. So he's got. Yep. So CMC Hugh has 32 seconds to take a tower. And honestly, Trainer yep. Nick's deck is unbelievably defensive yeah. and grindy. Yeah. It's it's very hard. It's kind of a pseudo rocket cycle, except it, it has a few more. It's not so defensive yeah. structure oriented, but the idea is the same. Right now, you're incentivized to just tank up yeah. and make sure you don't lose a tower. Minor defensively, you know, I think this is a good choice. Yeah, I agree. Like he pretty much knows that all he has to do is cast that lightning here. So wow, lightning, which did not win the first time we saw it, has been really yeah. key in this game from the almost the very first yeah. card cast in the game. Lightning was 
along with Princess yep. and Ice Wizard, where the primary damage dealer is not mm -hmm. the mini P.E.K.K.A.s, right? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know when, but the meta in the near future, well, by the way, congratulations to Trainer Nick advancing, losing game one and then winning games yeah. two and three to move on. Uh, I think in the future, we might start to see a meta shift away from mini P.E.K.K.A. because everyone is so ready for it that it mm -hmm. almost ceases to do the job that yeah. you would expect it to it, do. It, it, would, it would just be foolish to continue playing your hand into, into your opponent's uh, right. decisions. So let's see, we have, um... So uh, we need to watch Gray vs. Santi. Gray vs. Santi, yeah, okay, let's mm -hmm. pull back up here. Is that the first match? I'm not sure. Let's, uh, yeah, here's the first one, okay, cool. Here we go. Boop, boop. Cool, so we've not seen Santi play yet, but we've seen Gray play, and Gray is using kind of, a, again, a triple legendary Pompeo style deck. Yeah. Santi is using a giant poison ice spirit deck? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would imagine the ice spirit is there. It's almost a pretty as good like defensive a, card. It's actually, I like ice spirit as a poor man's ice wizard, especially in elixir collector decks. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you consider that you're playing the ice wizard on defense, the ice spirit is obviously you know best on defense as well. And when you're trying to play a deck that's getting multiple collectors out, having the option of like ice spirit and zap for every cycle means mm -hmm. that even if you play like mini P.E.K.K.A. Valkyrie, mini P.E.K.K.A. you know, musketeer or whatever, like two four cost powerful cards, your whole cycle is 11 elixir yeah, because of the ice really spirit cheap. and the zap. Yeah, that's very, very good. Um, Gray, on the other hand, yeah, this Pompeo list that's been going around getting really popular. Let's see how game one goes. All right. <clears throat> uh, good luck. Pull the Musketeer down off the bottom, because I don't think this deck has a Musketeer. A lot of these triple legendary decks sometimes opt to play Musketeer instead of mm -hmm. Ice Wizard. They have a, a similar amount of hit points, right? They're oh. equally... Nice. That's a big combination of Valkyrie continuing to demonstrate why it's such a strong card. Oh, but still one hit. Yep. Worth. <clears throat> I mean, one hit is all. That's what I mean. It's a very binary card. If Mini yeah. Pekka doesn't make it, it does no damage. If it does make it, it does a ton of damage. Yeah. There is no, like, it's not like Spear Goblins, right? Where sometimes yeah. Spear Goblins get, like, a few hits in. Sometimes they just get killed right away. Yeah. That was a good minor on the Elixir Collector. It's almost yes. completely gone. Mini Pekka played in the wrong angle, and oh, that's all the difference. I like Here this. it comes. Here it comes. Oh, wow. Oh, it does reach. And I think even though that thing will... Oh, wow, I didn't actually get the second shot in. I say yeah. even though that push got stifled, he only spent five elixir on it, and yep. his opponent spent more in defense, yeah. right? And now this ice wizard is at very, very low health. Ooh, those if fire spirits just ground up. Mm -hmm. and that's oh, no. Two oh, shots. Oh, no. Ah, man, I can't help but imagine that Santi's defense against these... These mini P.E.K.K.A.s are just are just a little bit lacking. I mean, we were well, talking about everybody's so ready for mini P.E.K.K.A., but it's true. in the I case that you're words. not... It's almost, yeah, you certainly can't overlook it. I, I think that the defense here is supposed to be the Ice Spirit, but we've been seeing the Ice Spirit used on offense. Yeah. Musketeer yeah. can also work defensively because it's just the extra shots with the tower shoot yeah. it down before it hits the yeah. tower. And he's going to use it aggressively again. I like this freeze here, though. If we can get... all oh, the Ice Spirit can't get there. It's, like, caught up. Oh, yeah. wow, look at that last oh chunk it did. Yeah, if you it need had to gotten... stop it before it charges up to that point. Yeah, there's definitely a flip over time where suddenly it just starts going, like, chunk, 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 yep. you're dead. If somehow that could have gotten there two seconds earlier, didn't get caught up on the body of yeah. the uh, giant, I think that that yeah. would have gone very differently. It's it's one of the big problems with playing uh, uh, Jason's giant hog rider combo yeah. is that the hog rider gets caught up behind the giant too. Yeah. You know, and it, and it really hurts. The giant is like uh, it's like three tiles wide. It's like a three by two tile placement or body or whatever. And so anything that's like a two by two or one by one gets caught up behind it and keeps you know has a hard time getting around. At this point, I think Gray might have already wrapped this match up because he only needs uh, maybe a single princess shot mm -hmm. plus a zap to take it home. It's very close. Oh, wow, look at those mini peckers though. That low yep. health mini, oh, yep. and the zap came in a little too late. So there's still some chance here. Nice. The ice tower is attacking. so good defensively, but the, but the ice was actually Ooh. falls and the giant is gonna get maybe three swings. Spoke too soon here, even though mm -hmm. low health. He has 25 seconds to do 1.2k. I can imagine a world where the mini P.E.K.K.A. makes it if great. Uh, uh, one more. Oh, if he just zapped. Oh, wow. The Valkyrie didn't kill. Oh. Yeah, is the ice would just slow the Valkyrie down. Would have okay. killed it before the second shot, but just a little too slow. You need to zap the Inferno Tower. I didn't tower. realize that Valkyrie doesn't one-hit Princess at Tournament Cap. Huh. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> that is an interesting note to make. Yeah. Nice. So that allowed that second shot to go off and able to, to bring it down. Yep. Gray, 1-0 over Santi. I think Santi just had a lot of problems, maybe because just a strategical decision, just how you were placing your cards and how you were deciding to use it. I didn't see a, 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 a 
concerted effort to get multiple elixir collectors down in cycle and also ice spirit being thrown on offense to not that great effect yeah i uh, i think that yeah DeSanti probably wanted to use the, the ice spirit and the musketeer and the zap more on defense kept using them on offense and then the counter push just like didn't have the key yeah. defensive cards so we're just showing the decks real fast it is another one of the minor furnace ones against the uh this giant poison, you know, list that we just saw out of Santee. Santee seems very familiar with it. Uh, I think can make up for the mistakes of last game and hopefully try to stay in this. If Gray wins, though, that's it for Santee's day. Go home. Yep, yep. Oh, no, this one. Dude. And here we go. All right. So, yeah, big big play for sure with the, uh, the mini P.E.K.K.A. out of Santee's deck. I think that seems to be the... I mean, that's such a key card in these matchups, especially these mini P.E.K.K.A. on mini P.E.K.K.A. matchups. It's whoever yeah. uses their mini P.E.K.K.A. better and, and is yeah. able to prevent theirs from getting just, like, goofed up by yeah. the opponent. Yeah, the important thing to know is that if your mini P.E.K.K.A. is above that 572 health threshold, you will still trade mini P.E.K.K.A.s because yes. it's still two swings. So the big thing to do in a mini P.E.K.K.A. duel... Well, I say dual, but in, in trading mini P.E.K.K.A.s is you really want something like maybe an Ice Wizard because that's going to slow down that's going to slow down the swing of the mini P.E.K.K.A. and allow you to get yes. your second hit first. Because even if you have maybe a damaging unit to support your own mini P.E.K.K.A., if it can't put you under 572 health, it helps nothing at all. Sure. Because it's still two swings to kill the mini P.E.K.K.A. That's a... That, that's those, those guards are, I mean... Guards um, have been really big today, too. I, I, yeah, guards have just been really coming to the meta huge, and they I don't know if they were in as much last week, yeah, you know? No, they definitely weren't. It's crazy, because you know what we haven't seen any of today? Not a single one. Or no, I'm sorry, we have, we did see one deck. was was a Royal Giant. We yeah. saw one Royal Giant. Hardly, we haven't seen that many Hog Riders. Very, very few mm. number of Hog Riders. But today it's been all, like, minor Furnace decks, lots of guards everywhere. Interesting that he just threw the ice spirit out there. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that was Cycling. just a cycle, right? Yeah. But you, you figure if you put it with, if you put it in front of some fire spirits, yeah. it makes it there first, deals damage, and then both fire spirits actually yeah. plop in for extra damage. I think this mini peck is going to do some work. Oh, psych, oh, there nice. comes the guards, last minute. Those guards again. Great card. Got to get mine leveled up. Ice oh, and I like that the guards are going to block for the mini peck here, so you got the two in front. Oh, oh. the ice spirit's still there. Oh. oh, it does kill it though. The miner's tanking, so here comes oh, a near no. full health mini Pekka. I would play 572 oh, a my shot. Oh god, no! Santee. A second one! And this is oh, what we're talking about. This mini Pekka defense is really, really, really yeah. good. Ugh. Santee's letting a lot through. Gray actually has two nearly full health towers with 45 seconds to go. I think we might be uh, saying goodbye to Santee sort of soon yeah. here. Yeah, it's quite possible, but Unless we'll I see. speak too soon, because those uh, we always think the guards aren't good against Zap, but they just got the crap zapped out nice. of them. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Double Musketeer plus Giant. I don't know. There's not a lot oh, of... Oh, and the Musketeer... Okay, the Musketeer did lack okay. onto the good one, but you're right. That Giant is just doing significant amounts of damage by itself. One more punch. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's zappable. Oh, no. Poisonable, zappable. Gray, Gray needs to focus. He has two towers down very, very low, and what this means is that he needs to play the mind game. He needs to oh. put the fear in Santi's heart that he could take down either of those towers, but I don't know if he has enough time. That Giant is walking awfully close. Yeah, not with... He just he wasn't able to distract the Giant. I think he should have put it maybe a little closer there. Gray did, but with only five seconds left, not enough time oh, to attack onto the no. Giant. That wow, good job, Santi! Right off the bat, had some good exchanges and was able to bring that back into the. Uh, bring yeah. the deck back. We can move to game three between Gray yeah. and Santi. What, what exactly threw for Gray? Now that I'm trying to think. I mean, he well, allowing two. that one push was was pretty brutal. Not having poison kind of hurt him because there was a lot of times where poison, uh, like, would have stopped those pushes big time, and we saw a little bit out of it. Oopsies. Here we go, this one. All right, so Gray has to stay on, his, on or rather, Grace, Grace stays on his furnace deck. All right. Santi swaps to... To a Hog Rider variant deck with Hog Freeze built in. So it still has yeah. the... Uh, he Lector. doesn't have Musketeer, but he still has the Mini P.E.K.K.A., the, I, the uh, Ice Wizard, the Ice, Ice Spirit. Spirit. It looks like Hog Freeze have, has replaced Musketeer mm -hmm. and some of the other ones. So let's and, and he has arrows now, which is interesting. Right, arrows over Zap. Opted yeah. not to play Zap in both decks. Really interesting choice. I actually like that. I mean, Zap is one of those cards where it's very, very good. I don't want to say it's overplayed, because that implies that it's not worth it. It's a really good yeah. card. But in this format where you can only copy four cards between both 
Dex, mm -hmm. Zap isn't old, Zap isn't like core to a strategy, right? Yeah. It's not like Elixir Collector where it enables a type of gameplay that you might not otherwise yeah. have. Yeah, it's it's just a very very good card. Yeah. Oh no, you got faked out. Ooh, and that allows oh even oh, with the ice, ice spirit, spirit or a double fire spirit. Uh, but I think those oh nice. and the mini Zap gonna win one hit. Santi again it's worth keeps it. letting these mini Pekkas walk up and maybe you should play Zap in both decks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Santi, let's see this version. We haven't seen a whole lot of Hog Rider on the field today. Oh, uh, the guards. Oh, and a freeze, actually. Mm. They have a really long attack range, which is another underrated part of guards. They have those yeah. long spears. They actually yeah. reach a little further than some other cards. Yeah. Oh, and the one guard tagged onto the tower is doing a good amount of damage here. Nice, and that Valkyrie was just bare. Oh, the freeze both. The musketeer. Ah, well, that's okay. It's not being shot out of the tower. That's gonna be really strong. But already, even that unanswered musketeer might just finish this tower off. One oh more shot. Oh my god. Yeah, Gray. Santi's gonna need to justify the fact that he was saving Elixir for that. You know, we we mentioned even last game, even though Gray lost last game, that Gray's defense is really strong and late into the game had a significant amount of health in the towers. Yeah. Now that Gray's taken an early tower, I think we might see more of that like A-plus defense. Yeah. And Santi's really under a lot of pressure now. I mean. Doesn't have a collector out, getting poisoned right now. They're almost elixir even, despite the fact that he poison is currently taking down the yeah. elixir collector. Yeah, that's there was a big elixir advantage gain. Ooh, hog no Rider fire spirits blow up. And I really think that that was actually the result of that hog rider freeze combo. Yeah, another and good we'll freeze there. Oh, oh, the ice spirit no. does a great job at, at pr basically stopping two seconds worth of that attack. Yeah. And, and this is why Freeze is such a risky card, especially now the duration is short, and if you do not convert that into some meaningful amount of damage or some yes. extra trade, then you're really, you're really down on your luck. These guards might take out this other tower, too. Yeah, another thing we've noticed, too, is a lot of people are being a little greedy with their ice spirits. They're playing a little too close to the battle lines, and we're seeing one elixir ice spirit just getting yeah. chopped, chopped up before. Up. Like, there was one on that last push on defense by Santia that just didn't quite get there. And there's another one. See, but I like I like playing it far back like that. Even though that freeze went down, ha for half of that freeze, the hog wasn't moving because of the ice spirit. Yeah, the hog Good freeze. Good game. Yeah, I think what's really hurting hurt, hurting Santi is just the hog freeze. is is not as effective as he would like it to be. Yeah, the, uh, Gray didn't play any big doofy freeze targets, right? Like yeah. there was no barbarians like yeah. in the lane where the whole thing could get frozen. Most of his things are guards, which are kind of cheap. Musketeer, which stands far enough away that it's hard to freeze, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, six. It's a good thing it wasn't a crown chest. Nice. So Gray will move on. Santi is eliminated, and we now have our semifinals. That is right. We've got Gray versus Clyde, and then Trainer Nick versus Trainer Chris. Oh, no. The two traitors. I think we have to watch that matchup first, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah. The trainer v. trainer battle. Oh, man, this is so good. All right, so this is all right. We are in the semifinals right now, folks. So for all the viewers, thanks for sticking with us through the group play. We are in the top four right now. All four of these players have won some cash prizes, right? You get Amazon gift cards for placing the top four. Two hundred for first place. One hundred for second place. Only one can advance. Yep. So game one of the semifinals: Trainer Nick versus Trainer Chris. What do you see here? Trainer Nick is running two very interesting decks. And also interesting to me, going back to kind of the mentality of these players, he does not open with his Sparky deck. He opens with his Lightning deck. Yeah. And I wonder if that's just to feel out his opponent. I can totally see some players maybe who think a little bit harder about the format saying, hey, this deck is really great at kind of like deciding it has a lot of... It, 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 it plays in such a way that I get to see how my opponent plays a lot in different situations. And yeah. maybe, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be true I think for it's also Nick's case, worth but. mentioning that this deck seems a little bit more well-rounded, right? It's yeah. not picking at opponent's weaknesses, it's just, it's just a well-rounded deck. Yeah. So, given that he doesn't know what Trainer Chris is playing, and no matter what he's playing, like, you got to win with this deck, yeah. having a opening with a well-rounded deck allows him to be diverse towards what he's going to yeah. see from his opponent. Yeah. And, and I suppose it, it actually makes a lot more sense because in the case you don't really know what your opponent plays like and, and what cards they play, that's going to hurt Sparky, a Sparky deck, much more than it is another deck, yes, right? For sure. Because with a Sparky deck, you want it's kind of like the information war, right? You want to yeah. be as well-informed as possible once you play your Sparky deck to know you can guarantee some kind of result from, from when you place your cards. Absolutely. All right, Trainer Nick versus Trainer Chris, game one. This was it right now. I just want to make sure we're getting the right one. Yep. Yes, it is. Oh, 
All right, we're back. We Builders Workshop again. The first map that we saw today, and now the map we're seeing in the semifinals. This is my, this actually my favorite arena for sure. Got him. See ya, elixir collector. Is it even gonna get one pump? I think it does. It gets one pump, right? Yep, it so got one. I'm gonna get the bracket on screen too, so we can watch that. Have that available. All right. So that was actually really interesting to me. Just then, uh, Trainer Chris played her, played the mini Pekka in the in the back, um, and I wonder why he didn't just play in the in the front because he didn't assist the mini Pekka with anything. He wasn't saving elixir. He could have saved himself just a little bit of tower health. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I think uh, really tight tournament players highly value tournament or tower health over elixir. Like yeah. I know on the ladder or maybe in like a tournament format, I tend to be I tend to be willing to take damage in order to get ahead yeah. in elixir. I tend to win a lot of like two one games yeah. and things like that because I'm willing to trade yeah. a tower for elixir. But uh, yeah. but I think in this level we see how many games end one zero and you yeah. just like every two hundred three hundred points really yeah. matters. And like we were saying, you know, the big thing about playing against lightning and rocket is that you need to be very very careful about your tower health very early on in the match. Right. Miner is doing a lot of damage. Mini Pekka makes it over. Get that little thing on stage. Alright, let's go ahead and can right click it. Yeah, I got it. Cool. All over it. Boom, there we go. Alright, cool. So we can see Clyde versus Gray will be the other match. Trainer Nick versus Trainer Chris is going on right now. Game one, we're all caught up. Alright. Trainer Chris, I think, has done a pretty good job of of defending his collector, but what's kind of unfortunate is that for Trainer Nick is that he split his damage up across these two towers yeah. pretty significantly. Yeah, and and that's that's due to him kind oh, of. Wow. It was one minor play and one lightning on the left side tower actually. Yeah. And so Trainer Nick, you can just see the the power of this deck of this deck right now. Oh wow! I the, those guards in the middle like would normally be good, but that princess just. Oh no! Boom. Double mini Pekka. The second one is always the one that it's matters. Always the one. Yeah, it's, the, it's never the first golem. Uh, that's a hit. That's not a it is not a it is a hit. Oh my god, and that just caught up Trader Nick. That one swing. Oh just wow, caught and Trader the princess Nick even up. got one more shot off before dying. Yep. This oh, is and the princess no. dies. Okay, well, technically there's 300 health left for Trader Nick. Wow, Trader Chris was able to pull it out there. Seven seconds left. I don't know if we can do 800 damage in the next seven seconds. You Ooh. know, it's interesting. I almost wonder if it would have been worth it for Trainer Nick. I don't know if it would have won him the match, but if he had just opted to use Lightning to hit the mini P.E.K.K.A. to allow the guards to move forward, sure. do damage to the tower, and then maybe the guards could finish it off. It seems unlikely, but but it's the little things, right? Where's the bracketing? It's in it. there somewhere. All these. Oh, there it is. We can just delete all these other ones. Nice. There we go. Cool. So we got that caught up, and let's move on to the next match, game two of Trainer Nick versus Trainer Chris. Uh, I believe this was okay. So this is game one right here. All right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes. Okay. This is the one we just watched. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna move to this one. And of course, this is the deck that you want to see, right? If Trainer Nick's going to go home with this game, with this tournament and this match, he has to win with the Sparky Log with deck. The Sparky Log. And, and the crazy thing is, the fact that he's here means that he did. Hey, you're right. Like, actually, this Sparky Log deck hasn't lost yet because if he's made it this far, it had, yeah. it had to have won at least had, one game in every yeah, match. You're he right. He has to have won with it. Um, you know, I'm noticing Trainer Chris. Uh, you know what, though? I kind of want to favor Trainer Chris on this one because he's got both the Zap and Poison, and Princess, all of which, and of course Guards, yeah. all of which are really good against Sparky. Like, this deck might try to punish your Zapping, but there's a lot of options besides Zap in order to fight uh, an incoming the Sparky. The big thing, and I think the big thing about, about how Trainer Nick needs to play out this situation is he just needs to be very, very intentional about using his Goblin Barrels. Okay. His focus should almost be on the Goblin Barrels rather than the, than the Sparky. Because okay. the Sparky is eventually destined for failure just for the fact that eventually it's going to have to meet the guards. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. And the, he's got Fire Spirits as well for the guards and, and barbs. Yeah. I think it'll also come down to just, like, does he... Like, I'd also like to see how well the log works against Princess. Yeah. Like, that could be another really common thing. So we'll waste no time in putting big old Sparky down here at the bottom. We know 
or other yeah. one, I'm sorry, at the top. Yep. And we'll princess put the, the one, maybe. I actually think Princess might be, because this is going to be really yeah. relevant. There's a lot of times, like not right oh. there, the Princess came yeah. out a little too early. But you'll see times where people play Sparky behind the tower. There it is. Yep, like that. And Princess can actually come down now and start and shooting. Splashing. The yeah, splash the tower and the Sparky several times. Sparky has so little hit points. But if you look at it, Princess shooting only twice is a third of, or 25% yeah. of its health, right? Yep. Uh-oh. Shine in front. The Ooh, guards will tank. The shield. Okay, the zap is still on board. The zap board. just went down? No, zap, no, sorry. Okay, was zap, zap was spent on the barrel rather right. than the Sparky. And this is what we're talking about. It, you need to, because the Sparky is going to meet the guards eventually, right? Yes. So I almost think that that was the wrong choice. Here's the log. Rolls it right away. Now that's a full health Sparky, and I don't know, can he surround with these barbarians? barbs? He does surround, good nice, job. Nice. So that's a very good mecha mechanical play, because if that was off by one square, all four of those barbs are dead. Yeah. I think Trainer Nick is very much incentivized to have Trainer Chris spend the zap on the Sparky rather, rather than the barrels. The barrels is where you're going to really find yes. a lot of your damage rather than Sparky. I, I'm really impressed with that last Sparky play. I mean, that was six Elixir that I think drew out more than six Elixir worth of whatever yeah. Yeah. From, uh, from Chris in just terms of how he had to counterplay around it. Yeah. Now Trainer Chris has committed an Elixir Collector, so I think by the time the Sparky makes it across, Trainer Chris will maybe be down about 3, 2 okay. Elixir. So, and if Trainer Nick fails his push, he has to deal with an Elixir Collector on the board. Yeah, no kidding. So Oof. this this is kind of a do or die moment, I feel. Guards again. And again, he uses his barrels early. That's just going to get zapped. Yeah, and then here comes the log down with it. And there's going to be Barbarians played to surround. Yep. Yep. And this is the, and that was a really good, not that was just great. One. He only got yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That was incredible. And even with the fire spirits, it's like the musketeer's still around and like a mostly mm -hmm. full health. I mean, he spent five elixir there on defense, right? The ice wizard plus the yeah. fire spirit. And ice wizard's not going to really do much yeah. damage on offense. Yeah. So kind of who cares? Now there's double elixir collectors, and things are going to get worse for Trainer Nick because giant poison is nothing to laugh at. Correct. And although, tra although no damage has really made it all the way over there. Although this push is looking pretty good because you got the guard. Nice. Zap oh, plus wow. log is a great combination. That log just rolled. Yeah. <laughs> like, rolled over a lot of that stuff. Killed the princess. The thing is, this Sparky is acting kind of like a pseudo musketeer almost. Defense than yeah. offense. That giant is a good blocker too because giant can eat. Oh, there's no zap. More than three. He has to play the guards in a defensive manner, but that look at how much damage that boink, did. Boink, and boink, boink, boink. Oh, that's wow. exactly what we were talking about. When the zap is down, Golem Barrels does actually oh, there's so much damage. The zap came in uh, right on the Sparky, and that's going to probably kill it before anything else gets going. And I like all the stuff in front. It might all get blown up. We'll see. And there's a poison to slow down the Sparky charge. So, yeah, the poison will slow it down from uh, about five seconds to like five and a half seconds or so. It's about a 15, 5.75 yeah. seconds. Oh, no. This is a really dangerous time. I just, wow. They're so close, though. I mean, even though these counter pushes are going well, they're both at such low health that any push could take it at any time. The giant 500 is health, be you could lose it in, in a minute, right? And I almost feel like this is a situation where you should use a goblin barrels aggressively. Or rather, one hit, one hit. Oh, every goblin stab matters. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, 38 health. Oh, the poison takes it down. Trainer Chris with the gi just a giant poison didn't even supplement it, right? Oh my god, I wish I wish I was in the coaching seat for Trainer Nick because I would have said Nerd. right from the start of the game, you wait until that zap and then you play your goblin barrel. If his goblins had yeah. gotten one more hit at the start of the match, he would have won. I'm not, yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Wow, I mean, great. That is the kind of matchups that we come to expect from the Super Magical Cup. That was an excellent. Put that on TV. Oh my All god. All right, so Trainer Chris. It just goes to show you how important it is to just kind of think about what you're going to do from the start. The, every minute, every second of the match matters. Right. Right from the start, Trainer Nick needed to analyze what was important. Is it going to be the Sparky? Is it going to be the barrels? You saw a Sparky shot zero times on a tower. Right. Every single point of damage was essentially the zap, the log, and the barrel. So we have game three now between Trainer Chris and Trainer Nick. They tied it up. I, the bracket says 2-0. That was not, not quite the case. Was um, it not? Did they make a mistake? Did they? Play yeah, I game? believe they they made a mistake. They were one and one. Um, wait, hold on. What? Oh wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, that was wait. Hold on. This was done wrong because what am I looking at in these matches here? Trainer Nick, Trainer Chris won the game against the Sparky deck, but Trainer. Oh, Chris won game one. I'm sorry, we were done. The lightning deck. Uh, so both Trainer Nick did lose two yeah. zero. I'm sorry. Yeah, Admins yeah. are right. Yeah. I was wrong because we're looking at we're looking at left right yeah. on the uh, thing. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Trainer Chris wins two over. Trainer Nick advances to uh, 
Clyde and Gray are the other match. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and watch Clyde and Gray from game one. My bad. Sorry, I got confused trying to look at yeah. all these replays. The list is not very conducive. The list, yeah, it's not, not real used to reading. All right. Clyde versus Gray, game one. So here we are That's with the Lava, Lava Hound Miner. Ooh, I did like that Lava Hound Miner against the kind of uh, the Miner first that we've seen. <laughs> it's quite interesting a bit of. that this is another triple legendary. It's another version of it. Triple legendary. Put a, put a lumberjack version in two. instead of that mini Pekka, and we've got <laughs> us a quad whole legendary? party. Yeah. Yes. You know, Clyde, like pretty it. impressive that Clyde's got this triple legendary deck going that he is uh, true free to play. So, Isn't another interesting to think of, thing to think about is Miner kind of interacts well with the rage mechanic of the lumberjack, but I just don't know if Miner interacts well with rage. Because even if you do not support the Lumberjack immediately, the Miner is pop-up, right? So you can mm -hmm. just have him just be in the Rage territory immediately. But, what, I mean, what, you know, cool, that's cool, but what do you get from that, right? Right. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's where, like, Goblin Barrel actually kind of comes in, because I could see you doing something like, uh, I have Lumberjack coming in, tanking the tower, I throw a Goblin Barrel, the Lumberjack dies near the tower, dropping Rage, and then the Goblins get to the benefit of the yeah. Rage, right? And you see how strong one stab from the Goblins are. If that get, earns them a second stab, worth. Yeah, especially for only two Elixir, right? Yeah. Uh-oh, that Elixir Collector, besides being poisoned, is now being attacked by the Deadly Miner. Ice Spear is actually a pretty good defense against Miner. Yeah. Uh, I like that card yeah. a lot. Having to use the Miner on defense against Mini Pekka seems pretty icky, especially because you still took... Two hits, or so, one hit, well actually two hits, one hit and another hit on your mini Pekka. So right now Clyde seems really far behind from Gray mm -hmm. in this first game. So something interesting to think about is if you play Ice Spirit as defense against Miner, I, I'm i not exactly sure if this will happen, but if you place units next to the Miner, if it will retarget to the units after the freeze ends. Because then you can start justifying three Elixir combinations where you play Ice Spirits and Goblins, or Ice Spirits even yes. and Guards, and play four Elixir, which is the same as playing a mini Pekka, but then you don't have that RNG chance of... of That's actually really smart. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't really considered it, but you're right. Freeze does all cause it to retarget, so if you do that... And it, you play a unit after, that'll let you get the rest yeah, of the thing out it, there. It ensures that you do not oh, take hit. five, six swings. And Mini Pekka oh chops the tower God. down. Clyde, not so, like this. But Clyde is playing a Lava Hound deck, and there's one right. on the field that has made it to the tower. Mm -hmm. He has really the cool. Miner in hand. He could play the Miner. He needs to play the Miner now, and he does. And it re Oh, it does not retarget, but it might now because it's actually closer. The two pups are still attacking. And two pups, are, I mean, they're not as good as minions, so Clyde but has they're time close enough. enough. Clyde has time enough to play... Oh my god, that's doing way more damage than I thought it would! Yeah. Clyde has time enough to play one more Lava Hound, and he needs to get it started right now. He's gonna defend this push here He's pretty effectively. Defend. Doesn't take too much damage, and here comes this Lava Hound. And he needs to be at the, got, at you're the bridge. Right. It's got a, oh, the it bridge. is the bridge. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, yep. maybe even behind and build up for it, but I think you're right. It's gonna take that first shot. Because it, it uh -oh. three Elixir is easy to make. All he needs to do is make it to a second right. Miner. And I like that the Princess Splash was big enough to clean up some of the guards. That Mini Pekka is not going to do any damage, really, princess but is gonna do this is well. enough. I think, yeah, this is, I mean, you even know, the Miner stopping it. The thing is, for Gray, there is actually incentive not to kill that Lava Hound, because once the pups right. pop, that's when the real damage happens. And if you can delay that for long enough, but I don't think, oh my god, just, just sneeze on it. Oh my, this and is And there's minor. so much, oh, he's got a Miner. Okay, there's so he's much needs, left in He his needs hand. to, Mind Game. Oh, oh it does it! Oh, no! Oh, Gray! Oh. The mind game. He should have played it on the top right corner. He should have, yeah, like he should have played oh it inside God, where no one's looking poker. at it. That is the poker of it. And Le oh, oh, oh no. No. no, God! Wow! So Gray wins game one, but the store, the book is not closed yet on Clyde because we remember in the Invitational, Clyde lost game one of every single match, <laughs> and then won games two and three. He is someone who uh, watches how you play and will come back and uh, learn from that. So Gray has got game one, but it is not an easy task to put Clyde away. Now Gray has to switch decks and go quickly into the match preview here against, it's got the giant poison, Clyde's giant poison deck is the other one. And we've got uh, Gray running the Pompeo triple legendary as his second deck. <gasps> Actually, I think this, you know, never count Clyde out, but this actually looks pretty good for Gray because the Inferno Tower uh, is mm -hmm. going to match up well against the Giant. Against the Poison, he doesn't have too many things that are, like, hyper weak to Poison, right? Like the Ice Wizard and Mini Pekka, etc. on defense yeah. are going to do pretty well. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. This is uh, Clyde. Oh my god, Clyde. Great. Really good job by Gray to make the read on yes. the minor. And he, you know, it's a game of inches, right? Like, that's yeah. something you gotta do. And I think Clyde opts to switch decks, too. Clyde is not sticking with his Lava Hound deck, even though he could have played it. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's gonna go back. He's returning to his, his seat as the Prince of Poison. Yeah, let's put, uh, let's put Miner up there this time, because I think 
I mean, it want, like we've said in a lot of these decks, it's really going to come down to how well you can defend the miner. And there we go. Mm, Clyde does nice. an, another one of those good plays. Between the Elixir Collector in the middle. Oh, no. Oh. Wow. The Elixir Collector in the middle uh, and ah, the oh, Mini Peck on defense. Still wow, still one hit. Yeah. It's yeah. not looking very good for Clyde early on. Gray is off to an early start. And that Ice Wizard still chipping away. Yeah. But Clyde was able to get a collector out, and that can always build yeah. up these big pushes. Again, it's worth mentioning that aside from the Inferno Tower, this deck cannot defend. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you can somehow circumvent that Inferno that Inferno Tower, uh, you're being in pretty good shape. So you see the barbs in front. in front, that's exactly what it's used for. Oh, and it misses the princess there. Oh, oh great separation from really Gray. Great. And he uses a zap not on the Inferno. Actually, but the barbarians though, make it. Yeah, and they do a pretty good amount of damage, but between the poison and the princess chopping him up, it unfortunately wasn't as much as he, he could have been, right? Really, really complex defense that Gray is demonstrating right. here. I mean, look how weirdly that uh, that Inferno Tower is placed. That's not a normal sp yeah. placement for it. Yeah, that but was, it was definitely great separation. an intentional choice. Yeah. yeah. That was really, really good. <laughs> Will he get another collector out, or is he going to go for the tower? Nice. Ops for the collector. Okay, right in the middle. And he can defend it once again. He should be waiting on a miner. Oh, I like the psych oh. out there. Although, I think those barbs are probably fine. Oh, actually, no, oh, the, the princess. Mini <gasps> the oh, nice. Oh, the okay, zap. the zap, zap bought some time. But look, yeah. the princess plus the bit... Blah, the princess plus the mini pack oh, up means they're one-hitting. I didn't even know that that was possible. The skeleton's I didn't know got either. Pushed. That's sort of weird. Oh, the last barb, the Highlander, <laughs> takes out the princess. That's not... We shouldn't display this kind of abuse on stream. That was just not... Supercell is not... Rude. <laughs> Rude. That's just insensitive. I, I watch, I've seen Brave and uh, Meridian. Those are tough princesses. They, can, they yeah. can fight a little bit. Yeah. For sure. Oh, the one goblin! Ah! Does oh, that God. kill! God, if a princess survives, that's so brutal. Like, when you make, like, a 3-for-3 three three trade or a 2-for-3 trade and you expect the princess yeah. to die and then she doesn't, you are in such bad shape. Yeah. Oh, the, the second, the second one. Pekka. It's, it's always the one. second mini P.E.K.K.A. Oh, my God. And the princess nearly... Okay, yeah, this mini P.E.K.K.A. is Wow, so... that mini P.E.K.K.A. has chopped up so many yep. things already, and these Gray, double princesses are going to take it down. Gray tried really hard, but... Uh-oh. Protect the princesses. Uh, oh, my wow, God. Wow, he does the barbs. Big guards. <laughs> Big guards. So the question Triple now, princess? I, yeah, I don't think he can do it. There doesn't seem to be... It seems like... Woody's Grace record is four, four, right? Oh, no. I think four is the record. Yeah, the Super Magical Cup four record. record. Interlull had it as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, so we saw a very different Clyde that second game, y playing yeah. his uh, very familiar giant poison deck, which now he's not able to play. He's going to have to go back to the Lava Hound deck, take what he's learned, and defeat this triple legendary deck mm -hmm. with Inferno Tower using yep. a Lava Hound deck. Using a Lava Hound. Channel your inner Pompeo. And Every I don't time. think he has minions in the deck. Yeah, yeah. Which is normally which is the thing the that you Which is the biggest, I think it's, minions honestly, I, I think are the biggest thing to defend against Inferno Towers. So let's see. Yep, we've got the triple legendary versus triple legendary. <laughs> Both minor, right? Minor in both decks. Uh, minor princess exists in both decks, as does Zap. Actually, there are minions. Clyde does run minions in the deck. Oh, so okay. If he, so I think one of the key things for you watching at home to look for is can Clyde play the minions like perpendicular to the Lava Hound, get in front of the Lava Hound, and clog up and kill the Inferno Towers? Yeah. If he can do that and also use things like Zap and Princess to you know, keep the Lava Hound alive, got a good shot. If mm -hmm. Gray can defend his Inferno Tower... I don't think Clyde can punch through the damage that he needs to win the game. Yeah, yeah. And I almost wonder if it would be worth it at some point to use the Miner to take on the Inferno Tower. Maybe. That's a good point, actually, yeah. Even just as a distraction, to put it in front. Yeah. And it, and it's a good mind game, right? Right. If, if he, You can't tell if he's going for the Inferno Tower or the Tower. I think Princess could be another huge card here, too, because when you have a big, slow tank coming at you from the opponent's side, that allows the Princess, princess to sit on her side and just yeah. shoot 10, 15 times throughout the course. Very, very hard to actually get that, damage up. That is why I really like Ice Spirit against uh, yeah. Mini Pack. Look at that. For one Elixir, it's done, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, Skeletons really do the same thing, right? But that's also really effective against things like Valkyrie, mm -hmm. Barbs, other, other sorts mm -hmm. of uh, attacks that maybe Skeletons wouldn't be so good against. Yeah. Okay, this princess is going to be able to take down the goblins, and there is a zap on Gray's side, so he could opt to zap the princess, or maybe play an ice wizard. Yeah. It seems to be the oh, go-to. Oh, wow. Uh, Clyde's starting early. Actually, it's good, though, that that ice wizard was played as early for Clyde, because it, mo they're all going to die here to, yeah. the, to the tower instead yeah. of 
The being question is, push. how fast is Gray going to cycle? We're not in double elixir well, the, right now. The Inferno Tower, look, he can't play it. He's going to do the same he pull again. He can wait. Yeah, he can wait for that pull. You're right, because the Lava Hound doesn't really do a significant amount I would, of damage. I would say minor on the Inferno Tower in this situation. Nice. But the Lava Hound's pretty close. Now they're not. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you were right. We were talking about how the minor actually does a significant amount of damage. And now it's And it's tanking the tower. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The Princess, though. Oh! Winning the Princess duel. Oh, no. Is it going to? Oh, oh it dies. The, the lone fire spirit. But that was good. I mean, Clyde played basically because he played his Lava Hound so quick. He's he's gotten an extra Lava Hound in this game. Now we're only getting into double elixir, which is typically when you would see the first Lava Hound come out. Sure. Clyde has already won up. Okay, he's given the the he's put the ball in Gray's court. Playing the elixir collector means Gray now has to play a push, and Clyde will have to defend before doing his Lava Hound, unless Gray does a slow push, which he does, and Clyde answers by challenging the slow push with the Lava Hound on his own. About two elixir behind. I think this is the right move by Gray just to go all in with your elixir when you can here, yeah. because you know that he has this at most scary. three elixir, scary. right? Oh, oh the oh oh, wow! They did they double zap each other. They I, were both yeah, afraid trying so. to get the hit. I think so. Nice, and this positioning is great. And there we see the minions. The fire spirits uh, do come in though, and I think are able. To, I mean, the fire yeah. spirits blocking was huge right there. Yeah. But the pups are kind of surviving. Yeah. Oh, there's the miner. See how much damage that thing can do. The pups. Do have a low amount of hit points, but it this takes is, a while. This is actually Wait, a pretty good. Is that push going? Is that is that gonna swing once? Oh no! Oh, the mini pack it does swing once before getting zapped off the Man, board. This lava hound miner is just such a diverse push. I really like very, that very combination. Yeah. Just three of the pups survived. Right. Oh wow, those got. Oh man, I don't really like that mini pack on defense. What else can you do, right? You yeah. know, you only have so many options. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of. I look at this interaction that just happened there. The cost that Clyde had to pay for the for his aggression. Yeah. And look at that, though. I think nice. Okay, we might be able well, to kill this that. is in cycling zap territory. Uh, yeah, zap does about 60 damage, 59 yeah. damage, something like that. Yeah. So two zaps will kill him. But of yeah. course, 1600 is a lot. You can certainly take 1600 damage. Yeah. And you can't use it when you got to use your zaps on offense like that. So there's one hit. Oh, he doesn't. Nice. But oh, these the princesses eventually are going to put that put a uh, great yeah. bad situation. It's they're just dueling. It's such a high pressure environment. Oh! oh ice the Ice Spirit. Spirit was able to stop those goblins from getting yeah. in and killing there. So this Clyde wins. Lit. That's game three, right? I mean, just took yeah. it down. The key yeah. game was able to figure out a way to win. And honestly, great defense by Clyde with this deck. Uh, the Didn't really ever go below, barely went below four, yeah. 1500 damage on either I tower. I really like this series because it shows just how incredibly complex you have to play to, to play at this level, yeah. right? For all intents and purposes, I felt like Clyde was always in trouble throughout that whole match. Gray was putting on a lot of pressure and, and had really good defense set up against Clyde. Clyde had to be very, very creative and very precise in his execution to even have a chance to win. Yeah, so Clyde, I mean, we talked about it, right? Like, could he get the minions to pull off? And it happened once, but uh, Gray was ready for it, right? Was not mm -hmm. caught off guard by that move at all mm -hmm. and uh, was was able to defend, yet still was just able to punch that little bits of damage with really precise minor play and uh, honestly stacking princesses, right? We talked, mentioned, we mentioned about he played the princess and stayed on his side long enough to cycle back to the next princess. Mm -hmm. And when he had two princesses out, that was what was able to kill some of Grays and then start yeah. laying damage on the tower. Yeah. Wow. So 2 1, we've mentioned it. Clyde is not out until he's out. Like, we just not, you cannot put this guy away. Rumham. So, Woody, we, first two time winner. Yes. Clyde? Second? Second, you're right, winner? won the invitation. It was actually, Clyde has never actually won a Super Magical Cup, these bracketed events. Yeah, he he's was only invited top through four. top fours. He's yeah. top four and top eighted, but he's never actually in top 16. But he's yeah. never, I don't think he's ever made the finals or won one. So, can, yeah. so Clyde. Wow, after a yeah. week of tournament play, has really upped his game up yeah. against another, you know, kind of new name stud yeah. in the scene, the tr trainer Chris. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. Uh, let's get game one of the finals started He's right now. with the Lava Hound. <laughs> Gotta get there, yep. right? Gotta open with Lava Hound. And again, Inferno Tower is going to be right. the interaction that he needs to watch out for. Let's see what else we've got here. So, unfortunately, trainer Chris does not have a very air-heavy deck, right? Mm -hmm. Like, minor... Mini Pekka, like there's no Musketeer, there's no yeah. Archers, Spear Goblins, that kind of thing. And now that I'm mentioning it, Spear Goblins kind of fell out of favor. What happened yeah. to that card? We haven't Spear seen any all day. Really, I mean, they just, even when you get them to work, the fact they get stopped by Zap so often, yeah. and then even when you get them to work, they're not as they're not as big swinging as Goblins are. Sure, sure. You know? So, wow, big call out. Uh, so let's, let's see... Let's see if he can do it. He did it once. Yeah. Uh, last game, let's see if he can do it again. Trainer Chris, though, no chump, right? No pushover. Yep. Yep. 
All right. Boop. Here we go. So we'll keep Lava Hound. Actually, we'll keep these up right as is. Yeah. The one thing I really like about Princess against Lava Hound decks is besides you get a lot of shots on the Lava Hound, theoretically, they're pretty good against the pups. The, mm -hmm. the big splashes can hit pups two at a time, but of course, by the time the Lava Hound blows up, it's like... Didn't your princess die to a poison by now yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. But it is it is a threat. They oh, deal with. the defense! We've seen that over and over again. So if you're struggling with minor, if you've been playing the last tournament week and wondering like, oh my god, what do I do about all these minor decks? You've seen some clinics today on how yeah. to defend. Place your collectors in the middle. Be ready with your mini P.E.K.K.A. and you can guard your collectors and still be able to pump up all that extra elixir. I love these minions on Clyde's side. We said there wasn't a lot of anti-air stuff in Trainer Chris's deck. Yeah. Those minions are going to be a very oh, oh very nice. strong defense. Uh, just because they're going to counter almost any push oh, wow. that Trainer Chris can put this together. This is one of the first games we've seen where players are just pumping up. Yeah. Oh, and again, again. another good defense by Clyde. I like that his D he played it right in the corner there. Yeah, yeah. And and Clyde very smartly played optimal positioning. Yes. That Because he played it on top right of the collector, each side that right. uh, Trainer Chris would have played has a high chance to tag onto the mini And Pekka. Clyde also just outguessed. Yep. The mini peck on the other side. Yep. So Clyde is definitely ahead. Yeah, he's able to defend his collector and then attack the others, which is, of course, the, the, the combination you want to have, yep. right? Now Clyde can play a third collector, and you can see a big... Oh. Oh, wow. But that one's going down, but it's also a little late, like, in the sense that that collector was mostly yep. empty. So this collector is free because the miner, of course, was just committed to right. the left side. So Clyde has a collector for sure. If Trinidad Chris loses this next collector fight, then Clyde will be a collector up. Absolutely. And that's great for him, because he's playing a Lava Hound deck. Hey, and that's a great timing, by the way, that he played the Lava Hound right when Trainer Chris played the Collector, because that means Trainer mm -hmm. Chris didn't have the full Elixir bar yeah. to rush the other lane and really oh, punish him. Ice Spirits against Inferno Tower? Nice. This setup Ooh. is very difficult to Inferno Tower right now. Oh, you're right. He doesn't even play it. He had it hovered, but he just couldn't couldn't do it. And it yep. gets in on the tower. Yep. I like that he was also kind of psyched out the Elixir Collector there, the mini yep. Pekka went on the other side. Yep. This is really strong. And remember, Clyde, I mean, he still has that minor that he can play. Does he? Can he cycle to it? And the mini pack is going to stop that Inferno Tower from getting too chumped up. Oh my god, this is really tough. Here comes the Miner. Now here's the Princess. We talked about the Princess survive. Oh, it does. It gets in there. Oh, oh good my timing. God, this... Unbelievable timing. That... Look at that. The hole it is locked on. Even though it gets chopped up pretty quick, look That's how much so damage much they're damage. doing. And they don't die to Zap either. The oh pups don't. Oh my god. That, I feel like Clyde, the... from the start of this game, Clyde had a strategy and... I, I can't imagine anybody executing it more perfectly than that. That I, was picture perfect. I love the addition of the uh, of, of the Ice Spirit to that combo because it allows you to kind of just... If, yeah. if they play something, even like other minions, your Ice Spirit freezing them right away and then letting your minions clean up almost just aces yeah. whatever they're doing. Trainer Chris is opting uh, just for the to let it go yeah. so we can move on to the next game. Yeah. Wow! That was just about the cleanest push I've ever perfect. seen. Perfect. That miner couldn't have showed up a half second later, you and know. You know, we, we talk, exactly need to. With Lava Hounds, we talk a lot about Pompeo, and and he had shown us some of the cleanest Lava Hound play. I think this takes the cake for probably the single best push that I've seen in, in a Super Magic. I mean, Cup. without a doubt, Clyde and Pompeo are the two Lava Hound. Mm -hmm. Like standard bearers, right? Yeah. Like if Lava Hound had generals, it yeah. would be it would be those two as because yeah. they have very different lists and different styles, but both of them are, are the two most successful players with uh, with Lava Hound in tournaments. Mm -hmm. And you know, Clyde has really impressed me from the first time we watched him. I remember the very first time we saw Clyde. and We'll get to the match preview here. From the first time that we saw Clyde, I remember being like, what are you doing with some of these plays? Like, I don't understand what you're doing. And then going back and watching the replays, Clyde sees the game, mm -hmm. sees the full three, four minute uh, development of the game, I think better than most players. So he can do something that seems inefficient now, but what he's doing is he's shifting his cycle. He's trying to move around the sequencing of his cards yeah. in order to build up these pushes. And you yeah. saw, like, if he can put together that perfect Lava Hound push where you're like, oh my god, Trainer Chris couldn't even play Inferno yeah. Tower. Yeah, yeah. That lets you punch yeah. through those huge amounts of damage. Yeah. What do you think here, though? Do you think the giant poison is going to have the same effect? Giant poison. I mean, again, I will say this over and over today. The best card to use against the Ferro Tower is minions. And it gets extremely complicated when you don't. But Clyde is very good at playing the Barbarian Giant combination. Kind of the Jason-esque Barbarian surrounding the Giant. Well, Jason did that kind of... He did that a few times. But Jason sure. likes to combine Giant Hog Rider with Barbarian. Yeah. Right? And that's kind of what Clyde has to do. The only thing about that is it is damn expensive to do that sure so we'll have to see i think clyde needs to play a little more precise i don't if clyde defends his collectors like he did in the last game he's gonna find very much success against trainer chris because 
elixir is is what what his deck is all about okay i mean clyde this might be something that i i would always say with clyde because he plays big bodies right and big bodies means elixir elixir yeah. management elixir efficient defense elixir saving and then also making sure that you have collectors yeah i definitely think that clyde's gonna have a harder time because but besides not having minions putting barbs up front is like not the worst idea except that he's got zap fireball princess and mini yep. pekka like zap plus mini pekka will wipe out those barbs yeah. and then suddenly yeah. the giant's exposed yeah. right and so, fireball just on its own right it's just yeah fireball plus princess is an incredibly cost effective method especially if we see clyde do something like play barbs to defend against minions right like yeah. play against uh, i'm sorry minor when the minor comes down if you play barbs to defend against the minor and they all get fireballed you're gonna mm -hmm. be real sad yeah Okay, yeah. Clyde. So here we go. We've got Clyde versus Trainer Chris. Game two. Yeah. Clyde is up a game. Trainer Chris has to win in order to tie it up. Clyde has to win with his giant deck because he's already won one game with his Lava Hound deck. Mm -hmm. And we saw some expert defense against the Miner. Let's see if we can keep that up. Clyde will have to play as Elixir Collector yeah. and see if he can defend it uh, well enough to pump up. So already something that kind of hurts Clyde right now. He did not have the Elixir Collector earlier than, right. than Trainer Chris. He needs to cycle the Skeletons. And look, just the fact that he wants to wait until 10 Elixir because it's a safer choice just further delays when he sure. plays his Collector. And here it comes. And the oh, other thing to note... Oh, what timing. The other thing to note is Clyde's other deck, deck had the Miner. So actually, Trainer Chris's Elixir Collectors can only be challenged by Poison. You're right. That's actually something I hadn't thought about until just now in the match is that... Yeah, like, the Miner, even though you use it with the Lava Hound, it's perfect for those times when you're cycling between collectors yeah. because you can attack their collectors It's kind of them. a two-stage game plan when yeah. you're playing Lava Hound. You the don't even need is... to... Uh, uh, oh, get the Skeletons down? Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Like, he doesn't even really need to... Oh, God, that Zap. Oh, wow. and then the, he got a collector. He got a P.E.K.K.A. down on his wow. own. And that P.E.K.K.A. is actually going to not only absorb a lot of charge, but do a little bit of damage to it. And the Princess is tagged on, but I don't think that... Oh, giant... didn't hit the tower. Oh, actually, the Poison is doing really, really well. And the Giant might yeah. make it to the tower. And there's no high damage units in, in Trainer Chris's deck. And so this Giant is going to get maybe two more swings out here. Very smart by uh, by uh, uh, Clyde to play the Poison up there. I was like, why wouldn't you poison the tower? Don't you always poison the tower? Yeah. But then looking at it, a Poison, a the entirety, all 10 seconds of Poison, does one punch of Giant damage. Yeah. So if you have to play it out of position in order to get your Giant to the tower, the Giant will make up that damage yeah. very quickly. Yeah, yeah. if you had to make a sacrifice and you thought that there was an opportunity to get your Giant there, you yeah. want to get the giant there. And that's, it's, it's those little degrees that matter. Like, mm -hmm. I've noticed from playing in tournaments, it's so, like, you have to be perfect. You have to know mm -hmm. exactly how to get an extra 100, 200 damage out. Split barbs. Interesting choice. I like it because it helps. Well, that's actually weird. It's not going to be so great against the Inferno Tower. Okay, we'll see. I mean, uh, this. Okay, well, I'm getting concerned for Trainer Chris right now because this is. Wow, a the second giant is. Oh, oh, look okay. at that, though. There's no zap either, but the. the the but again, neither neither giant's particularly weak. But I think that giant's oh, it doesn't go to the other side. I was expecting it to maybe drag yeah. to the left. Yeah, this is this is tough. Trainer Chris is gonna really need to pull out all the stops because now he also has to make sure he handles the princess. Oh, 19 oh seconds my left. God, and Clyde. I think this shot is Clyde. Gonna, he's gonna take one more shot. Giant poison. Plus, does that finish it? The, the, I mean, it does. he's no. gonna he's gonna. Defend. Oh, it doesn't. No, I mean nine because he's got the zap. You're right. He's got the zap. Yeah, he's got the zap. Wow, Clyde. Clyde two is O's. the best giant poison player. Oh, yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, he's, yeah, yeah. Like, actually, I, oh my god, wow. Clyde stomps through the field, takes wow. a 2-0 win, a, a pretty decisive 2-0 win in the finals, that I'd say. That was very decisive. I mean, both of those games, it seemed like he was just in the driver's seat the entire time. Uh, congratulations, Clyde taking it home. Wow. So what did you, what did you think about the meta today? Like, overall, so let's take a look at some of the top decks. The top four players, we saw... A lot, I, I feel like just... From our, our spectating experience, first of all, I think sure. there was a lot more Furnace, Miner, Poison. I think yeah. that is kind of the de facto go-to, I don't want to play triple legendary, but I also want to play sure. a very successful, consistent tournament deck. And I think that showed up a lot. So, uh, slightly more, I think it was what might, yeah, we, was Nick play the Miner Furnace deck as well? Now yeah. that we can actually show chat now that we're not worried about spoiling anything. Uh, I kind of want to go through and just take a look at these deck lists again. Uh, we can actually do it like this. But we had, so Trainer Chris had a, what is this? Is, it's, it's hard to say. It's like a, it's just a minor, it's not minor furnace, right? Yeah. It's, and it's not it's, triple uh, legendary. 
I mean, honestly, it's, it's you couldn't even call it the triple legendary with like the musketeer because the musketeer's yeah, not in there. So it's, it's really just like a minor princess. You know, it's like yeah. a burn deck, a control deck. Yeah, minor control. Yeah, it's 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 very vanilla. Trainer Chris had, uh, yeah, the, a similar his, deck. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, that was the same. deck. That's the same deck. I'm sorry. Yeah. Nick was the one who had the Sparky deck. Yeah, Sparky Goblin, the Zap Bait. Clyde had Lava Hound Miner, and that's the great. same Chris deck. So we yeah. saw the Lava Hound already. Gray, Gray ran triple legendary Pompeo. Yeah, the Pompeo list. Uh, and what was Chris's other deck? Oh, he had the giant. He had giant poison as well. Mm -hmm. So actually, we had a pretty a pretty diverse field today. So we go to see what Gray's other deck was. The one that won game one. Remember, Gray won the game one and then couldn't play it again. Minor yeah, Furnace. Minor furnace. So yeah. actually, maybe we're overreacting. We saw a lot of Minor Furnace in the uh, group stages. Yeah. But from our standpoint, let's see. Let's look at the top. So the top eight decks, we had two Giant Poison decks, two Minor Princess decks without Furnace, mm -hmm. a Minor Furnace deck, and then like a Triple Legendary Pompeo one, and then the Sparky Zap big yeah. deck. It's weird because I'd kind of group the minor princess and the Pompeo deck together into sort of a yeah. similar like minor control. Yeah. And then a, and a one minor furnace, which is much more of like, they are, they do feel different. They play different. Yeah. They're, they the do. minor furnace is a lot more high pressure, high tempo. Yeah. It keeps you on your back foot. Whereas I feel like the other three minor control decks were more defensive mm -hmm. and tried to get counter attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could. feels like minor furnace is, is, is almost much more similar to a hog cycle. than yeah. It is like a, like a control. And two giant poison decks along with the Sparky. And then, of course, the Lava Hound. So crazy that in our top eight decks of the top four players, not a single Royal Giant, not a single Hog Rider. Yeah. Hog Rider's, Hog Rider's out of there. That's interesting. That 16% damage nerf might have been a, a little more than people expected. Sparky, first time Sparky's made money in the Super Magical Cup. Yeah. First uh, uh, placing Sparky deck, and I love it's that it's a the great deck. deck. It's Let's a great deck. deck. Back up. It's a great deck. And I think it's a deck that could have won the tournament if Trainer Nick had 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 played his game a little differently. Yeah, you're right. Because it well, yeah, cause he he lost two zero against Trainer Chris, so he had to have also win with the other one. But you're right. Like deck, this was yeah. really the first time that we saw that the Sparky deck failed to pull a win out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love actually. You know what? I don't. I didn't see Log being super useful. And I'm not sure what. Like I assume that the use cases for it are. Princess counter, mm -hmm. you play it along with your mini P.E.K.K.A. and fire spirits is like another mm -hmm. way to clear out any sort of defense. But it didn't seem like it did very well in terms of blocking the Sparky. I guess it can knock stuff back, right? So people play like mm -hmm. barbs, you can push them all back and then it shoots it. Yeah. But uh, I'd love yeah. to hear more from Trainer Nick about what, like what log is supposed mm -hmm. to be used for in that deck. The other thing that far. I'm interesting interested in is that Trainer Chris doesn't have too many chump units, right? He's not running goblins, he's not running skeletons, right. he's running guards, he's running barbarians, he's running musketeer, which are not necessarily that susceptible to the damage aspect of the log. Right. Um, so that's, that's kind point. of interesting. Yeah, it's true. If that, if that was more like goblins, spear goblins, skeletons, those sort yeah. of things, the log would have been a lot more effective. As is, it, I don't think it even broke, and maybe it broke the shield, but it certainly didn't do more than break the shields. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Any last thoughts, sign-offs, before we uh, want to take it home? What's everyone, how's everyone feeling, chat? You guys have a great time? Who did you, uh, who should we, I want to see, what do you think is going to happen next week? What are your predictions oh for the meta gosh. change? Next week, Woody is probably going to be back. This week, he, he had sure. uh, stuff to do. As long as there's no Royal Giants in the field, those Mortar and Expo decks should be very powerful. Yeah. I'm surprised that more people haven't picked up on the Mortar and Expo train yeah. because it's now been I think two to three weeks since we've seen Royal Giant decks yeah. in the top four. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I wonder I mean the question is I almost haven't seen anybody else play a mortar at all and it could be something where it's just like yeah. we've not played with a mortar for so long we actually don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I've been playing uh, ec the Expo deck, Woody's Expo deck from last week, the, this whole week in the ladder and it's it's been great. It's, it's felt really strong so I don't think that it was just a fluky thing or something that where where just Woody played it and caught people off guard. I think it's a legitimate deck. So mm -hmm. I'd like to see more people try to play Siege. Um, I would be really interested in the next balance update, which should be coming soon, right? Because the last mm -hmm. balance update was July 4th, 
It was, yeah. with, it was with the patch, it right? July 4th. Patch. So as we approach the beginning of August, I expect another balance update. I'd love to see uh, Ice Wizard and Miner kind of taking a look at, maybe maybe pulled back in power level a little bit. The mm -hmm. Miner especially is going to get its own nerf. But I'd love to see spawner decks get better. That's something we've never really seen a lot of consistency. We've seen the Miner Furnace deck, but I mean like Barb Hut, Goblin yeah. Hut. Like what have yeah. happened to those cards? Those cards are... are non-existent yeah. anymore. So big big shout out, by the way. We had a great top eight this week. CMC Hugh, one of the most uh, accomplished tournament players so far in Clash Royale's short tournament life mm -hmm. from Elite Gaming. Trainer Nick and Trainer Chris, along with, of course, uh, new faces Gray, Santi, and Godly Love. We expect to see you next week. We're really excited uh, to see more top-level performances out of our top eight players. And of course, Congratulations to the Prince of Poison, yep. Clyde, for taking down his first ever Super Magical Cup bracketed event mm -hmm. uh, after winning the Invitational Championship. Yeah, yeah. so he's he's a two-time big event winner for mm -hmm. the Super Magical Cup, joining Woody. Woody technically is a three-time big winner if you could, could if you count the 800-player qualifier. Player tournament, right. But these players are starting to build a notoriety for themselves. Absolutely. What I love about it is it shows the difference between the good and the great. Yeah. You know, we had a whole field today of of good players like nobody was bad in this field yeah. but it just shows exactly how precise you have to be how much planning you have to do in your sequencing in order to be great to yeah. consistently no matter what your opening hand is no matter what the matchup is no matter what yeah get to the end and beat everyone in front of you absolutely so congratulations to Clyde for taking the tournament trainer Chris for coming in second and of course to Gray and trainer Nick I mean these names are going to be going home with some money on their own hands yep they're they're part of that historical super magical cup you know tournament record now, yep. and they have earned themselves points, working towards that championship. Uh, championship. Right. So on September twenty fourth, make sure to tune in. If you don't can't tune in every week, that's okay. But go ahead, clear your schedule, tell your wife, sell your kids. Because <laughs> September twenty fourth is the super magical cup season two championship. Where we're gonna bring the absolute best players from the entire tournament community and throw them into one massive awesome tournament mm -hmm. with some of the biggest prizes you've ever seen in super at a super magical cup or clash royale tournament. Go to www.supermagicalcup.com if you want to join the action. If you want to play against these players. If you think you are competitive, if you feel like you have any ounce of competition in Clash Royale, come and demonstrate that. If you know anybody, if you know, if you have a friend or if you have a rival, if you have somebody you hate who keeps t <laughs> telling you about how great he is at Clash Royale, tell him to join a Super Magical Cup because until we see it here, I don't believe it. Yep, I agree. And tune in every week because if you want to see the hottest new innovations and new decks, the evolving meta, this is the place to be. Look, every single week, the decks that show up at Super Magical Cup become the new meta on the ladder. The best players in the game are all tuning in every week and they start playing stuff from here and it trickles down from there. So I t go home, start playing these, uh, these Sparky decks and Lava Hound decks, and we'll see you next week. All right. See you guys. Thanks for watching.